Hello, brother men. Welcome to Supercast Brothers. I'm Jono, he's Zantok, and we have a special guest tonight named Action Mike. Hello! What the fuck? My name is Mike, or Way Off Trail. I am uh, part of a YouTube series with Zantok, funny enough, uh, called Select Star Gaming. I'm also on Twitch quite a bit lately, uh, and I'm way off trail on Twitch, so follow me there on both places, please. And, and what games do you like to play on Twitch? On Twitch, it's a lot of Dead by Daylight recently. Um, we all, I've also played um, le- lately some Pixelmon on there. Uh, funny enough, I just finished up an Assassin's Creed on there not long ago. Um, and yeah, I'm kind of all over the board. Nice. That's uh, that's how you do it, and uh, keeping keeping things a little a little varied. So, does Lister often join you on the Dead by Daylight streams? Oh, so often, often is an understatement. <laughs> yeah, so so was, often that there's yeah. some points when we were supposed to have meetings to discuss podcast issues, and I was playing Dead by Daylight <laughs> instead. That's my that's bad. That's why I might have figured. My bad. I can see your status on Discord. <laughs> yep, it's a thing. <laughs> Or like, you know, I was like, oh, I'm just going to do a stream where I'll play Killer or something, and boop, Zantok pops up. I'm like, well, I'm not playing Killer, I guess. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it's the game that you like to play a lot of, but there comes a point where it's like, okay, i got to stop playing this game for a while, because it's just yeah. getting too heated, and you like, don't play for months. Yeah, that's right. Right, sure. right. So it's, uh, it's the Animal Crossing of horror games, then. Yeah. Except I actually like it. Yeah, and not Animal Crossing <laughs> or horror movies at all. It's the yeah, one really horror enough, property I give a shit about. Yeah, funny enough, I also don't care for horror games very much, but I like Dead by Daylight a lot. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Seems like it's fun. I, I might jump in one of these days. Uh, so we're going to be talking about the, the... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're going to be talking about the Trapper today, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what I was told I thought... anyway. John, do oh, you even well, know who the trapper is? Outside yeah, he, of just the name. Pulls you, he pulls you into a trap and you have to escape. That's definitely You know, you it. got half of that right. Yeah, or rather you can't... Can you escape? Yes, that's yeah. not the, the half you got wrong was that he pulls you onto a trap. Yeah. How do you... Oh, why okay. would you pull someone on a trap? That's not how traps work. You lure somebody onto a trap, or you just leave one in the middle right. of a field and wait for them to just run on it because they're a dumbass. Hi, I'm dumbass. Right. Is that the map that I saw you play? There's a lot a of while maps, ago. dude. <laughs> there's a ton of There's maps. a lot of maps. There's there's outdoor maps with grass. There's indoor maps with tiles. There's a <laughs> Old West saloon now. I don't know, man. Nice, nice. So, um, Mike also pointed out something else interesting in his intro that we just kind of zoomed into, like an oh, Pixelmon. Movie. Thank yeah, that's thank pretty you fun too. Much. Yeah, <laughs> Pixelmon. But oh no, no, no! Select so Start Gaming. I'm trying to give you a plug. And you oh, yeah, Pixelmon. I thought um, you were moving on to the main <laughs> content. I'm just gonna delay that because I'm a dick. <laughs> no, 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 no. Can if you wanna, what what is Select Start Gaming in uh, in a nutshell? Select Start Gaming is a channel where me and Zantok and Twilix, and we have a couple other people who sometimes uh, post up on there or join us on. on... We do full full playthroughs of games, um, mm-hmm. and we've played. Jeez, oh, we play. We have quite a few uh, different series on our uh, channel right now. Um, currently airing, we have uh, Zantok and Twilix are playing Spyro Reignited. Oh yeah, uh, I have an Assassin's Creed Origins uh, going up right now. Uh, oh, nice. Some other games that uh, you that have up there, Dying Light was one I did. Um, Spider Man, Zantok did. Uh, let's see, just a couple other big ones: Minecraft Story Mode, Pokemon Soul Silver, Thief Simulator, Tales from the Borderlands. Um, nice. Yeah, there's a there's a ton ton on there. And so you also, I'm guessing, uh, like there's this sort of dichotomy between your your two personalities. You have the the jolly way off west and the and the uh abrasively lovable Zantuck. So yeah, there's between... some very different when <laughs> when we do ga- uh, a co-op game or something together, yeah, they tend tend to be very uh heated. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun, man. Yeah. How do oh, I get yeah. out of the oh, car? Yeah. 
Oh my god. <laughs> There's also yeah, a big here, difference in here skill we are level in playing Borderlands games. 2, a game I've never played, never having Love. anything to do with. And we're just Love like, okay, so get in the car and we're going to go drive this place. It's like, okay. And then we're, we get out of this other place to go do some mission. The way off trail in our uh, third person tubs, they get out and go yeah, do we, the mission. I'm we got, like, we destroying everything. And yeah. then we just hear a quiet, how do you, how do you get out of the car? <laughs> it, and admittedly, admittedly, part of that was be like, okay, I don't know how, but I'm gonna wait for the most comedic moment to ask the question, <laughs> and I think good. it worked. Yeah, it I, I, ju good. I just looked through. We have over 50 series currently on the channel. Wow, and that's and not even counting the over 100 episodes of Shuffle Play that we have up, which is generally just random right. episodes that we do just different games. Like we've got uh Multiple Tetris matches 99. of Overwatch, Tetris 99, yes, uh, Slime one, like, Rancher, random. Town of Salem, Pokin Tournament, Hack and Slash, Metroid yeah, Prime 2 multiplayer. Have, like over a thousand five hundred videos total. We definitely nice. have over, a and some of those, yeah. yeah, and some of those videos like are thirty minutes, but there's also some that are like I, uh, some of my Pixel Mon ones are two hour. Well, my Pixel Mon ones are the, from taken from my stream, so yeah. they are like. Uh, not to say I stream a lot, but like seven hours or something at a time. Yep. Oh, wow. You know. Nice. You can listen to that to carry you through a work shift. Yeah, right. Are you, uh, are you, are you, uh, you know, feeling, feeling down and blue with the, with the COVID blues working at Target or Walmart or McDonald's or the hospital? And just listen to seven hours of Mike on Select Start Gaming and it'll there get you go. through your shift. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or you could listen nice. to seven hours of me, but you know. And... Right, and we can. They can do that on Select Start Gaming and Supercast Brothers. They can do it on your upcoming um, podcast. It's me, Lister, and just <laughs> let's not commit to that, right? But you no, know, I, I demand. I demand a vlog channel. No, right. right. You know, it's funny you mention that because I tried it once. I did. Try oh, that. I. I am surprised you even tried it. I did. It was when I was in Texas. Oh, we God. Try, we, I remember that because I was a part of it. Yeah, you were in I, one of them. I, yeah, I was in one of them, and also I crossed over with the random crew and interviewed you in two in a two-part video. Yep. Just about yourself. <laughs> it was a and thing that, that occurred. And that's throwing that way back. That was like 2011. God, and knowing your so, personality, Lister, that shocks the hell out of me. Listen, man, I didn't know anybody in Texas. I was rooming. It was with, a weird phase, man. I, I was rooming with three druggies. I didn't know what to do with myself. He <laughs> had to go find himself. Yeah, rather. yeah. I so got the hell out of dodge. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's not what we idea. got. It's that was probably about yeah, roughly this... a year before I knew you, actually, Mike. No, oh, this was a uh, so it's enlightening. That you, was two thousand nine. From a, you've moved on from a room with three druggies to record a podcast with two druggies. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> well, how do you no. think? How did you think you got way off that trail? Huh, true. <laughs> Very nice. Speaking of way off that trail, I think that's where I've kind of led us astray a bit because we're actually here for a Smashtopia episode. I mean, it's not like this is an on-topic is... episode. No, that's true. We're, you know, an off-topic series of episodes would not be bad. Well, but... uh, the, the name is taken. Unfortunately, off, off topic as a podcast is already taken, so we can't do that. Oh, of course. What if we what if we mash the words together and just have it be off topic? That may work. Anywho, we're we're yeah. actually here to talk about um, a certain Mike mentioned Assassin's Creed, and while we're not going to be talking about Bayek this episode, uh, we are going to be talking about the flagship assassin of the series. I'll tell you. Oh the, yeah, from the, the critically acclaimed first Assassin's Creed. <laughs> no, rather, uh, our old pal Connor Kenway, the Renaissance man. Yes, no, Ezio. Oh, Auditore. Yeah. So, um, as I understand it, I've played a lot of Assassin's Creed, but it's usually from. It was actually speaking to Connor from like AC three onward, just on us on the count of I always owned Nintendo systems and Assassin's Creed didn't come onto Nintendo. Until the Wii U. So I am not as well-versed in Ezio as I should be. Uh, Lister, I know you've probably never played Assassin's Creed in your life. But Actually, you that's also wrong. I played Let's Assassin's Play. Creed at your house once. 
You did. I you? think it was AC3. It started out as like an old guy on a pirate ship. I played yep. for about an hour and then I stopped because I was not good. Weird. Fun fact, you did not <laughs> play as an assassin. Nope. nope. Well, no, I, after, after that point, I was an assassin, but it started out with some old guy on a pirate ship. Right. Or a ship of some kind. Right. I don't remember. This I was ages ago. Ages and ages ago, that's right. But um, speaking of ages ago, I don't, I don't think that any of us have lived during the age of Ezio, but we can at least chronicle him here for Smash purposes. And Mike is the one who I think probably has the most hands-on experience with Ezio. So if you could, could you tell us a bit about the character for those of us who are uninitiated? Uh, sure. I've played uh, uh, Assassin's Creed pretty much uh, a lot of them. In fact, I've played them in order, and I'm up to... I just finished Origins. So the only one I have not nice. played is Odyssey, and Valhalla just got announced, which I'm pretty excited about. Me too. Uh, so Ezio Auditore de Firenze is a... Uh, the Firenze means uh, he's from Florence, Italy. Mm-hmm. And he... So his his main story starts where he his father and two brothers ended up being executed uh, in public, and he just happened to be he just happened to get out of being executed, and so he ends up wanting revenge on the people who did this to his family, and through doing so he ended up becoming an assassin and eventually a master assassin. He ends up creating the Brotherhood of Assassins. And he, his whole story is actually, uh, when you play the game, you're actually not technically him. You are one of his, one of his ans- or uh, one of his uh, descendants. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Descendants. Uh, Desmond Miles, who is modern day, and he's in a device called the Animus, which lets you view the lives of your ancestors. And he, they're trying to figure out. Um, things that the assassins had and the Templars had back then and try to find out where they are today and get information on things like that. So they look into the life of Ezio and all the things that he did and you play out uh, Ezio's life and it jumps through time uh, depending on like uh, when he was killing certain people or there's certain things. What's really cool about Ezio's story is I've actually been to Italy and I've actually been to, um, because he travels a little bit all over Europe, but I've been yeah. to Florence, Venice, and I've actually been to places where I've been to in the game. It was really weird when I was standing awesome. in Venice one pl- one place, and I looked around and I go, why is this so familiar to me? And then I was like, oh shit, I played this, this, this is from Assassin's Creed, wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> Other way around. <laughs> it's funny, because I've seen a similar story online about, um, a group of people that went on a school trip to Italy and at one point they were lost and they didn't know where they were going and one kid's like I know exactly where to go and was leading them through all kinds of back streets because he played Assassin's Creed and was like I know the whole layout of the city because of a video game. Guys, just follow yeah. me. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, and I, I kind of want to mention, I think the reason why we're talking about Ezio versus like Bayak, who was mentioned earlier, Altair, who was definitely mentioned, um, that Ezio is more he's more famous compared to the others because he besides the fact that he had three games compared mm-hmm. to like Altair's one or you know even Bayak one he's the one that had the most games and he just symbolized the assassins very very well and he's kind of what brought he's kind of the face of the assassins he kind of brought the series to a recognizable point Altair may have been first, but Altair was a very bland, generic, vanilla character, so he didn't really have any. He didn't really have anything to go with. Right, right. So it's Ezio who brought charisma and flavor to and the assassins as a char- as a, as characters and really uh, popularized the the entire series uh, for the to the point that he got three games, and I think he had a. A movie as well, if I'm not mistaken, with lineage. Uh, it so would be him, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's quite a fan following behind Ezio, as opposed to the other assassins. Like Assassin's Creed has only grown and grown and grown over time. It's a really cool concept, and Ubisoft, you know, credits to them because they do enough historical research where you are 
jumping through the back streets of of, uh, of Florence, or you are, you know, running through a fairly accurate recreation of of uh, New York after after the fires of of the 1700s, something along those lines. But uh, Assassin's Creed Two and and Brotherhood and Revelations are arguably the crux of the series, which is why at some point I should probably play them. Whoops. Yup. So there's that. And and Ezio too, he's he's already been become popular enough to appear in other titles as well, uh, such as Soul Calibur Five. I'm sorry that he wasn't able to be in a better Soul Calibur game, but hey, at least that that is there. <laughs> So uh, thanks for thanks for kind of taking the reins on that and and bringing us through Ezio's background. No um, problem. I mean, pretty much without further ado, if you guys are ready, we can hop into the meat of the discussion, which will be attacking this this uh, move set proposition and and seeing where we get between the three of us in forming a collection of taunts and victory poses, special moves, etc., for translating Ezio into another crossover game which is no surprise at smash brothers because this is a podcast about smash brothers wait this isn't playstation all-stars battle royale you know what it just might be uh, i think that we have a shot of actually crossing over as playable characters in that in that series i thought we were making ever get another new... game i thought we were combining this with animal crossing <laughs> oh. you know one of these days we could <laughs> i mean is, is... i mean people have definitely made flags and outfits based off assassin's creed characters so oh yeah um, oh yeah i've seen it's already out there that's true that's true um and there's already a full-fledged animal crossing uh nightly show that that's been created by the 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 script writer for rogue one of all things i can't remember the name of it right now but it's kind of entertaining what Hmm. yeah so animal crossing is being utilized in interesting ways theoretically we could have a video feed running through this podcast right now and we're all dressed as different assassins being like yeah this is what we would do for Ezio." and for some reason it's just a feed of the three of us as uh characters on xantox island yes <laughs> hang on i'll get my switch yes <laughs> okay. oh wait somebody on here doesn't have one shut it oh oh shoot who is that oh, okay it's not as much as he so. wants to play Animal Crossing, he can't. Yeah. One uh-huh. of these days. One PC, of these days. PC Master is. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, sure. PC have your have PC Master is where we can't play Mario or Zelda. I know that's the only downfall. Shut up. Mm-hmm. Nintendo mm-hmm. decided to you know get, you know get the picture. But anyway, continuing on. Sorry. Uh huh. <laughs> At least you didn't say Mac Master Race because then you'd have to oh. be TFO. Ugh. Sorry, <laughs> threw up a little bit there. Ugh. And to any of our Mac fans that have now turned off the podcast, don't worry, Bye. you weren't wanted anyways. <laughs> He's like goodbye. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, no, it's it's okay. We all know Mike operates off of a uh, next gen leapfrog that has been jailbroken. So there's yeah. that. And uh, usually with our usually with our move sets that we do for Smash Topias, we start with entrances. We, en- we yeah, we enter with the entrance. So, without further ado, who would like to pitch their entrance for Ezio first? Well, since nobody's speaking uh, up, I will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, the one I've got here. Uh, I think it's fairly unique. I, I don't think anybody character already has this, although we might have discussed several ideas for other things. But what I like to imagine is Ezio, you know, he's all about climbing and running around, just doing a whole bunch of parkour bullshit with his free running abilities. Oh, so I figured, like you know what's fun? Let's have Ezio actually climb up from behind the platforms, pull himself up, and then he just jumps onto the stage from there. <laughs> nice. Nice. I like that. Yep. Uh, Mike, you want to go next or should I? Sure, I'll go. Okay. Uh, so my idea was kind of similar to yours where he comes up from off the screen, uh, except for mine, he's coming up from the top of the screen in a leap of faith type of style. Uh, he, so almost as if he jumped off of something high up off above the screen and he lands like in, in a hay bale that just spawns, you know, for a brief second. Nice. And nice. he throws himself out of it 
and the hay uh, the hay bale or hay cart despawns, and then he he uh, uh, puts out his uh, assassin blades. That's that's also both of those are very characteristic of the the uh, the character and the and assassins in general. So both very nice. Mine uh, takes a separate approach where Ezio uh, loads in from the animus. Oh, uh, I so, thought about that yeah. one. Yeah, so he, I, I don't know the exact stance that he'd be in. Maybe he's uh, getting up from off the ground as the animus effects are are uh, kind of forming around him. So you see these kind of uh, polygonal uh, white and brown transparent masses on his body that are slowly filling in as he loads in onto the screen. And that's that. Loading at Toyota.exe. Kind of. Exactly, yes. So uh, those are our three entrances. Did we... Uh, I always forget how we do do this. Do we jump into taunts and victory poses first, or are we just going to... No, we do the entrances first. The end? Okay. Okay, so we have three entrances, and the problem is I think they're all good. Yeah, so, these are all three yeah, pretty solid. Pretty good. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm biased towards mine. I'm sure everybody's biased towards theirs. So the hard part is, of course, which one are we going to go with? I know. I know, and there's also the case of maybe we can somehow mix some of them into one another. Ooh. Um, in, in 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 little in little ways at least, like going with like Mike said something about showing off the hidden blades. We can show off the hidden blades in probably either of the other two as well if we go that way too, where he does the a quick flash. That could also be a, a potential taunt. Yeah, that that sounds taunt material to me. Yeah. Um, so there's that. So the question, like, they all take on separate portions of Assassin's Creed that are all integral to the Assassin's Creed experience. Regardless of what Assassin's Creed you're playing, there will be elements of parkour where you are free-falling, there will be elements of parkour where you're climbing, and there will be elements where you are experiencing great wait times inside of the animus between yeah. planes. So... <laughs> So th so there's that. Um, uh, God. Honestly, allow I'm me, at a loss. Allow me to make a suggestion okay. here. Okay. I'm going to suggest Come we forth, immediately Bethlehem. strike out the um, the free falling or the leap of faith into the hay bale because that one can also easily be a victory pose. That's true. Meanwhile, that the true. animus loading in and well, they actually, actually, any of these three could theoretically could be a victory pose if I really want to think about it. The parkouring one might be a little bit more difficult, but the loading of the animus and the, uh, the leap of faith into the the hay can both easily fit under victory pose territory. Mm hmm. Right. He see this is this is list what Lister does. He's a very even keel ideas guy in this podcast. So when we come forth with Smashtopia, he in a in a very uh suave jafar like manner you know he just holds the the golden snake staff against your face and he's like this is why mine is the best yeah <laughs> you're like <laughs> now, no, to be fair, no, no. yours i actually have uh idea for somewhere else oh interesting yeah. i nice. have a very similar idea for yours somewhere else let me just get the okay. snake staff for a second. Now, the, the thing I like about... I, I think I might have to agree with Zantok on this, because after hearing your guys, I think mine might have been a little too long. That That is right. something that we that... sometimes with, with Smashtopias, between each of the entrance taunts and victory poses, sometimes we make such suggestions that these are super cool, but if we think about it, in-game, that's way too fucking long. We, yeah, we, we do think, that a I'm lot. Mine might be a little too long with the falling and then jumping out of the hay bale and getting ready. Right. Yeah, it might be a little too much. Now, if there wasn't jumping, he was just getting out of the hay bale. That would be quick and easy. Yeah. That's what work. Right. Or, uh, on the other hand, if he was just jumping, and, but then again, he would just fall flat on the ground. So that wouldn't necessarily work. Although, falling flat on the ground is also an interesting part of Assassin's Creed. Yeah, um, but you usually <laughs> die after that. Yep. Ragdoll it. Um, nice. So... I, I kind of agree. When I, when Mike was listing out his, I was just waiting for someone to say it might be too long because it could be. Because if you think about the 
entrances in a game like Super Smash Brothers, uh, you they're they're there are pretty a couple seconds long. Quick, right? Like uh, a lot of them, like Marth teleports in from a from a teleportation seal, or Captain Falcon flies off, uh, jumps out of the Blue Falcon, which she just flies onto the stage real quick. Uh, Fox yeah. drops out of an Arwing. It takes like two seconds. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. Yeah, so um, while I love that idea, and it's it's probably my personal favorite idea, it's also uh, the the least uh, likely for feasible. Smash. Um, right, like least feasible. And the Animus, because it can be used elsewhere, I'm going to have to go with our pal Jafar here. Yeah, I and, think Jafar's and... got it. The, the yeah, funny thing is, so, I um... was stroking the beard just a little bit when you were saying that. <laughs> so, you know. Nice. Nice. <laughs> And it's in, he's, he's climbing in from, from the bottom of the screen, which uh, not many other characters would do, so at least there's that. They would not. What, you think no. You think the ice thing was going to climb something? Come on now, that's just and it kind of gives it kind of gives <laughs> his parkour ability in there, because that, other than that, like maybe besides like his jumps, that's kind of hard to kind of like... To represent. Represent, yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's also true. That said, I do okay. have another video that I'm planning to represent free running later on. We'll see how that goes. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> oh, interesting. Uh, onwards, fair children. To onwards and upwards taunts. to the taunts. Yes. So, so how how we are how we're going to be doing this this here, Whale Trails? We're, we're each going to list one taunt at a time, and then we we'll have to <laughs> narrow down from our nine to three. It ain't right, that's easy. not going to be difficult at all. But we'll do we'll do the taunts and the victory poses all kind of together. We'll just talk about our taunts first, then our victory poses, and we'll see what we want to do with these. Because sometimes what we suggest a taunt might turn into a victory pose instead. Hmm. Yeah, that's happened oftentimes too. So it's uh, wouldn't be unprecedented. And how how do you want to format this out? Because guest episode is always a little different. Should we just do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, until we're done with taunts. Like and a dance. The same with victory poses. Yeah, like a dance. I mean, uh, that's, good old... that's pretty much what we've done before, so I see. I don't see why, a okay. reason why not to do that again. Okay, it works. well, uh, yeah, that's true. So you kind of kicked us off with the entrance. I, I'm just going to say that I'm going to just jump right in and, and dish out a taunt. Go for it. Just, just uh, okay. Uh, so this taunt is based off of the one of his official artworks, I believe, to like the flagship artwork from Assassin's Creed 2. Uh, anyway, it's it's basically taking from Mike's entrance animation, but in a separate way. FCO uh, flips his cape back rather rather suavely because that's the kind of man he is, and he reveals both of his hidden blades. Easy. Looks like the artwork for Assassin's Creed 2. Makes sense. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And uh, way off trail. How about you? All right. Um, my first one here. Um, let's see. I'm actually gonna go with one. I'm actually gonna go with my third one because it's it's very similar to yours. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he looks at his. Uh, so he stands and he looks at his hands, and then he just shoots the hidden blades out, and then just pulls yeah. them back in. Just, just like looks at them, shoots them out real quick, and just kind of like checks them, and then just puts them back. Nice. I uh, I like that because it's very similar to playing Assassin's Creed 2 and maybe pressing the weapon button when you're just in an idle stance and he would do something. Yeah, he'll just shoot out. Yeah, if you just press it, he'll just shoot him out and then just bring him back in. Right, right. Nice. And how about uh, how about El Pots? So were the two of you both with, with something very practical and straight from the game for your first time for Ezio? I decided to go in a different direction. Oh, God. So, have <laughs> either of you guys ever been to the circus? No, thank Have you all. ever seen that guy that would juggle knives? Yes. Ezio has throwing though, knives, so why doesn't Ezio just juggle with them? Oh, dear God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, sometimes taunts make no fucking sense. That's true. L- Luigi's weird poses that he does? Come on. Where the fuck is that from? <laughs> you. Yeah. So, that's true. That's true. I, uh, I I like it. I think that it's something that begets Humor. SEO's personality, at least early on, yeah. So there's that. And I, so I, I can... Definitely different. I, can I did not think that. of that one. No. Um... And you kind of you kind of can't because it comes from the mind of 
a madman uh, Zantok and and yeah exactly so when I imagine Ezio doing that I can just as easily imagine you doing that oh I mean, I I'd really like have to a, see him try I do have a dagger so oh I'd really oh, like to see you, you try I'm not that dumb <laughs> get the hospital on standby <laughs> The hospitals are busy right now, so you might just be... Oh, yeah. Yep, you're just dead. (laughs) Over. Oh, buddy. Desynchronization Um, right there. A little bit. (laughs) A little permanently, though, so let's... (laughs) Um, Okay. My next taunt. Um, I actually stole this from my entrance because I wasn't sure where I was going to put it, so it's just... Ezio flashes in and out of the Animus, and he, and this is funny because it's kind of falling from Mike unintentionally, looking at his hands as his body shifts between whole and holographic. So it's just kind of this aesthetic effect, and he's like, what? (laughs) And that's that. Um, Again, just kind of pulled from the uh, Animus loading screen effects. So I, 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 I think that it's enough of... Uh, part of Assassin's Creed where we should work it in somewhere. I'm just not sure where. So I'm just throwing it everywhere. Fair, fair. <laughs> Eventually yeah. it'll stick. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, my that's... second taunt, um, which is actually my first one now, um, is, again, another very simple one, but it has to do with something that he says a, very often in the game franchise. I, I know what this is. Now, my Italian is not very on point, so anyway... Uh, it's just very simple. He just <laughs> bows his head, or uh, he either bows his head or he kneels down. I kind of like the kneel down a little bit better. He kneels down and he says uh, the the phrase that he used. Rescue, God, I can't yeah. say it. You can you can just say uh, the rescue, English phrase. Rescue and pace. Yeah, which and is he, you just hear him say that. And I did look it up the other day when it's it meant, and I already Latin. forgot. Yes. How do I know this? Because that's one of my victory poses. Oh, me too. My victory pose uses like a full-on sentence that I'm not going to attempt to pronounce at all. Yeah, please don't. My my <laughs> my, my version of that was slightly different. I don't have him kneeling or anything. I just have him like holding up his sword in front of his face as he quietly speaks to his sword. Nice. Yeah. The only thing about the okay, kneel, uh... I I I would like to add the kneel is because he always is kneeling um over his enemies, right? And that uh, makes over his sense. slain people. Right. That's that's a good idea. That's a good way to work it in there. I was thinking about that as well and couldn't quite figure it out for my moveset. So good on you. Um, let's wow. see. Would you guys like another weird taunt? Oh, boy. Oh, I like so, weird taunts. So, Assassin's Creed 2, a large part of the game is Ezio trying to track down the apple of Eden, right? You know, like, yeah. you know what people like to do with apples? And I don't mean eat them or put them in a pie. Don't be weird now. You can't do that with the apple of Eden. That makes no sense. No, instead, he's just going to lightly toss it in one hand, just up in the air a couple times, and he gets ready for the fight again. Yeah. I like that. that that'll work That's out. I can see uh, him doing that probably against his better judgment. Uh, so. Well, he doesn't always have the better judgment. No, I that's know, also I, true. I didn't do anything with the Apple of Eden. Well, really? that's it's my one good. contribution to the Apple of Eden. Yeah, I never did anything with it. I have the Apple of Eden somewhere in my moveset. So, okay. there's that. Um, last round of taunts. Uh, and for me, uh, it is bringing in something that is often associated with the free fall, but also not a free fall at all. Where an eagle screeches with that iconic ah, mm-hmm. eagle sound, and Ezio holds up his arm and he lets the eagle perch there for a moment before it flies off. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's that. Uh, my second one was pretty simple too. Uh, he just take uh, he takes one of his smoke bombs and he just mm-hmm. uh, tosses it on the ground and it doesn't like make a huge thing. It just kind of does like a little dust up. Um, instead mm-hmm. of obviously like the whole area because that would be pretty op. So it's a bit of a um, dud. Right. It's a bit of a dud, but it just does enough like of a when he does the whole motion of throwing it down. Nice. Okay. I like that. And and how about you? Oh, well, wait. my you, final talk is something a little bit more practical. Okay. 
Wow, guys. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so Ezio here, you know, he's going to pull out his sword. He's going to flourish it a bit, do a couple of fancy swings. But as he's doing that, he's going to order, we must never give up the fight. Uh-huh. Hmm. Yeah, I like that. That's a classic quote from Ezio. And it's uh, surprisingly grounded coming from you today. Wow. So. <laughs> wow. <laughs> listen, man. Listen, man. You know taunts and vicar poses are my weakness. Sometimes I'm just like, no, shit, I... man. I don't know. Maybe he juggles. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not I'm not against any of your... It's just we I mean, have to... I, I'm also the guy that came so. up with Waluigi doing a break dance. So. Which was included in wow. the new set, so there's that. <laughs> it was also fucking brilliant. Thank you very much. Yes, yes, it was. Yes, it was. I'll, I'll give you that. Um, I guess we're gonna just kind of list those off, set them aside for now, and we're gonna talk about victory poses too. All right, let's get to it. Okay. Um, well, my proposition is you kickstarted the entrances. I kickstarted Thomas. Maybe Mike can start off with leading us into a victory pose. Sure. Why not? All right. Sweet. Okay. Uh, so my first one, uh, after he wins, uh, it zooms in on Ezio, uh, uh, yeah, it zooms in on Ezio, you see him, so his hood's pulled down, uh, all you see is pretty much the bottom part of his face, and mm -hmm. you just see him smirk, and he just, uh, falls backward off the screen as he, uh, falls back off a ledge. Oh, nice. Okay, interesting. Holy moly. Huh, yeah, I did not think of that and i am he, sad i did not yeah Ezio was one like that smirk he had this smirk about him all mm -hmm. the time and that would be i think a really good one for him he, he's a little bit smug would... mm -hmm. yeah. yeah very much so oh man that was good thank you okay uh how about you zanti so i already kind of mentioned my first victory pose it's you know he uh, i mentioned that he has to sort out in front of him as he says the phrase rest in peace but in latin but I do like Mike's variation of that more, where he's actually kneeling down. So whether that's a taunt or a mm. victory pose, I definitely like that, and I think it should be in. Right, and I had a... I'll just leave that off for me, because I use the same thing, because I think the whole rest in peace thing is such a large part of... It has like, to be such an iconic part. Exactly. So, um, Ezio... Mine was that he uh, turns his back towards the screen... Um, you, with his with his smirk and begins to walk away and he and he murmurs that iconic phrase then um which you know it's it's more it's more you you more pedestrian so i uh i would say that if we're gonna choose a uh rip taunt that it be somewhere more along uh mike or lister's purview hmm. i'd yeah. say mike's version so, but yes I, yeah, I so like, Mike's. I like mine too, just learn. <laughs> <laughs> Weird when you uh, like your own, you know. I mean, that's what always uh, happens. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, um, I guess it's my turn for a second. Pick go your for it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, so this is the one I kind of was thinking uh, that that Jono had been thinking of before with uh, the animus type deal. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be kind of in the um, <clears throat> with the animus background type deal. Uh, so he's kind of in that computery little world, and he's walking toward the screen. Um, and there's an iconic picture of the assassin when the assassins they have their arms out, the hidden blades, and they just walk right. forward. Wow. And as he's walking forward, it shows him in his hood. It flashes. It shows just Ezio without or the hood kind of disappears, and it flashes again, shows Desmond, and then flashes back to the regular assassin. So like just a few quick. A few quick flashes, but ends starts and ends with the just the cloaked assassin. Nice. Okay. Again, and, do, and doing fine. of course the like you were talking about with the the um, the animus effects with the um, glitches and stuff. Right. Right. Glitches are also unintentionally a very large part of Assassin's Creed. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. I mean, to be fair, to be fair, for most of the Assassin's Creed games, or well. I mean, like, for most of any one game, not, like, the whole series. It makes sense for there to be glitches, because you're inside of a program. Like, come on. Yeah. Mo most right. of them most now, when you're of playing them were as Desmond, it doesn't make sense. But when you're Ezio or Altair or whoever the hell else, it kind of makes sense to have some glitches. Yeah. Just saying. Pretty much, most of them didn't have glitches except, like, <clears throat> Syndicate. <clears throat> but the rest were pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But at, at the same time, you still you still load in and... And see some horses and apples and stuff oh, just yeah. kind of floating in midair. And that's yeah. always fun to see. 
Oh yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, but never never. The... I hear that Lister's gonna hit us with another victory pose. I am. So, imagine if you will, <clears throat> an empty victory screen. Except it's not empty. It's actually a wagon of hay on it. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> you hear the sounds of somebody falling. And then Ezio just falls down into the wagon of hay as if he was doing his leap of faith. And he just peeks out really quickly through the hay. You can see his eyes. And he just, instead of coming out of it entirely, he just kind of like leans partway outside of it and just looks out of the screen. Kind of like how you I... might lean your arm and uh, face a little bit out of a car when you have the window down. Mm-hmm. Kind of like mm-hmm. that. I like it. I would change one nice. thing, though. What's that? Instead of hearing someone fall, you hear the, uh, every time he does a leap the of faith. The eagle sound? The eagle, yep. That makes sense. I like that. Yeah. That's true. That's true. I like that a lot, too. And I and I agree with the, with this little shift. Uh, for me, uh, here is one that is a tad dark that I also unironically like a lot, and it's entertaining. So, <clears throat> imagine, if you will, In a the world. world. <laughs> In a world. Precisely. In a world where Ezio is seen holding one of his defeated opponents near the floor like in assassination oh. sequences. Oh god. And he and he's just ha- like imagine Ezio holding Mario on the ground with his hand under Mario's neck, just looking at him as if he's just killed him. I personally love um, it. Nintendo probably wouldn't. Nintendo would not. <laughs> <laughs> also, Pikachu. I know. How well, do you do Game and Watch? Jigglypuff. <laughs> nope, shutting it down. <laughs> Mike, your final victory pose. Go. You know, I, I was reading it just now, and I actually want to add a part to my own thing that, as we've been talking. That's common. Uh, something I want to include do that now. In Cyberpunk 2077. I know. I was like, ooh, okay, here we go. So at first I just had he throw, like, uh, it's just of Ezio. Uh, it's, it's a pretty simple one. He just, Ezio, and he throws back his hood and winks at the screen. But I want to add now, so, because uh, I didn't have the uh, Apple of Eden. This would be a really good one where he throws back his hood, kind of throws the uh, Apple of Eden up in the air and catches it real quick, and then just winks at the screen. Nice. I'm with it. Okay. Yeah. So, for my next one, as Jono knows, when I'm building a character, I like to try to include as many different things that that character can do in their moveset as possible. Some things don't work as an attack, but sometimes there's more uh, more low-key things that a character can do. That's just like, you know what? This could work as a pose of some sort. So, when Ezio has uh, a little bit of heat on him in a sense screen, he has a few different things he can do to get people off his tail. He can tear down wanted posters, he can bribe people to stop talking about him, or he can find himself a group of courtesans and hide okay. amongst them as they walk about. So, for a victory pose, I propose that we have Ezio standing amongst a group of, let's say, a four courtesans as they slowly mill about a little from left to right, hiding him from view of anybody who's trying to catch him for, well, as John has suggested, brutal, brutally killing Mario. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Again, I see the Nintendo issues. Wait, what's Very the Nintendo nice. issue here? <laughs> you know, there's implications. Uh, However, I, I actually did think of something very similar to that, except it would have been with just random uh If they can have Bayonetta in the game. Because Ezio does also blend into just a random group as well. It doesn't exactly. necessarily have to be prostitutes, but you know. Wait, th- I'm, I did not use the word prostitute. <laughs> I said lovely lady courtesans. You know, they're just doing, they're just helping him hide. That is all they are doing. There are no implications to be found here, sir. No. They're just ladies that yes. happen to work at night. You know, they, they could be called like ladies of the night or something. Nurses work at night. Yes, they're totally they nurses. They are nurses. Yep. 911 <laughs> operators <laughs> work at night. <laughs> now, if, I can't remember if it was that game or one of the other ones that follow. Wow. But there's... There's like a point where they pretty much tell you, yeah, 
it's a brothel and um this is how like they teach you how to use that feature and it's really weird I mean, I, is, I'm uh, pretty Black sure that's Flag Assassin's Creed 2. Oh, I think Black. you're right. I think it was Black Flag. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, wow, okay. It was grand. I yep. still think um, it's a good idea. I, I'm i I'm cool with it. I mean, I, I, I think that, um, you know, it's there, there won't necessarily need to be implications in the idea if he's just blending in with a uh, group with of ladies. The woman and they're not performing anything. Uh, you know, rather lascivious. If they're just walking with them, then maybe it wouldn't be an issue. Um, <laughs> that was great. I'm sorry. That... <laughs> Thank you. It was my favorite <laughs> idea for the victory poses. Yeah, and and it's a good one. It, it's a good one. <laughs> it's um, yeah. So my, it's really hard to follow up on that. So that's the reason I see it for my uh, last one. Yeah, my last one is very uh, utilitarian by comparison. It's just Ezio turning towards the camera and and crossing his arms. Uh, and we get to toss toss one of his trademark uh, looks towards the camera for good measure with the his trademark snark, or uh, or really actually it's rather more serious what he what I would imply that he says. So maybe not. Um, where he simply states towards the camera with a with a close up, uh, one of his trademark phrases: "We work in the dark to save the light. We are assassins." Hmm. I considered that yeah, quote, but I thought it was it. too long. Well, that is something that I can relate to, so it's okay. <laughs> okay, so now comes the hard part where we have to take these 18 ideas <laughs> and pick three taunts and three victory poses amongst them one yes. thing i think that we would all be in agreement though is that the uh, the kneeling um pose where he says rest in peace in latin needs to be in there and i think it works best as a victory pose i agree i think that works yeah cool so we got one so there you go victory Victory pose number one. There you go. Woo! And with that, we can we can knock out. Um, so should we do the victory poses first? I we we kind of mix and match sometimes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that one thing that I would for sure fast track, if you if you will, without trying to stroke my own ego too much, is the eagle taunt. I'm just tossing that out there. Oh, I did like that one, yeah. So there's a that's there's potential. It's a there. good way to represent um, the leap of faith without having to actually show it, because that is a long thing to do. Right, right. But um, but then the leap of faith was also a victory post proposition from you. True. I um, think we should only do one or the, one or the other though. I wouldn't even call that. Much. That's where the eagle comes to him, right on his arm. Right. That wouldn't even uh, really be a leap of faith for him. That would be considered his eagle vision. So really, they're not right. actually, they're not even really connected, actually. The sound is the same uh, for the jump, but right. his eagle vision does not work that way. Okay. That's so, true. I, so funny I enough, it is different. That. There was, I didn't have eagle vision anywhere in mine because uh, it was mm -hmm. kind of a hard one to put in. But I think mm -hmm. it works kind of for that. That's true. Okay. That's true. So there's still there's still potentially room for both. So I guess we just have to kind of sift around a little on the other ones to see if we fit both in. I kind of have one I think was I, of mine I really liked for a victory pose. I really like the one where it's uh, uh, the assassin, then Ezio, Desmond, then the assassin again. That's a pretty good one. That filters in. I agree, and obviously there would be no other instance in which we can represent. It was a major part of the early games, mm -hmm. so there is that. I'm I'm cool I'm cool with that, I I would be cool with fast tracking that too. Can um, let's see. So that's two victory poses and a taunt we have locked in. Uh, we don't have the taunt locked in yet. Oh, the, yeah, not, not wait, the we were one? we were discussing possibly the eagle, possibly the uh, the leap of faith, possibly both. Oh, right, right, right. So um, but are we saying that we are fast tracking? 
purposes of mics. I, I do not. think that there. Yeah, I was gonna say I do think that there's not necessarily a place to that put this, those two victory poses. Otherwise, that there's like, only one other way that there. I think showing the animus can really work. But I'm fine to have yeah. it as a victory pose. Oh, I know what you're thinking. It's a pretty obvious thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it totally. It can be a stage. Anyway. That's actually true. Okay. So, but no, I th either way, I mean, the, a, a stage proposition, which could very well happen by the end of this, still wouldn't represent Desmond Miles. Right. So there is, right. So there is that. Um, okay, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Um, if Mike is... Uh, that would mean that Lister is the only one that's actually saved and remembered each of these taunts. So right. Let's do let's do a quick walk down memory because lane. Because I we... totally did that. I have my own written down. <laughs> we can just read nice. them all off again. Besides, I'd say quickly cut out. Yeah, I'll do mine. Uh, Bowser's head says the Italian phrase. So that one's I'm gonna say that one's out because we took it somewhere else. Agreed. Right. Um, the throws down a small smoke bomb. And then I have mm -hmm. the uh, looks at his hands and the hidden blade shoot out and then puts it back. I, I like that one. Of my three, I think that would be the one I would say that the best likely to be a taunt. I agree. The smoke right. bomb one, while it would be a good way to show the smoke bombs, is a little bit weaker in comparison. Yeah, I would agree. I, I agree. And, and uh, smoke bombs also may actually make an appearance uh, in the move set, potentially. True. True. So there's also that. Um,. So yeah, I, w I would go ahead and cut those those two. My taunts were the eagle that we already mentioned, uh, the alternate hidden blade reveal with uh, just flipping his cape back to and, and revealing them both at once to kind of mimic that forward-facing artwork from the first game. Uh, and then flashing in and out of the Animus. And now with the Desmond victory pose, we can probably instantly nix the Animus taunt. I agree. Right. Right. So um, now we have two variations on Hidden Blades, and I think one of them should be a taunt, and then the other one definitely should not be because we don't need two of them. I would agree. agree. Uh, re re let's go over that real quick before we go into my taunts. What are the, t the core differences between your two versions of revealing the Hidden Blades? Right, okay. So mine, um, are you familiar with the, with the front... Uh, the front assassin? where Ezio is standing in place and he has both hands kind of extended outwards. Right. And he's revealing the blades. Okay, so mine looks exactly like that. And Mine looks like that. Yeah. Mine is more he's kind of, he's on, like, not even really facing the screen, but you just see him kind of looking at his hands, shoots the things out. Now, the only thing is that pose that you're using for yours is mm -hmm. the um, same pose that was being done. It's pretty much the same pose that's in the victory the victory pose now right uh which victory pose uh the does the one with desmond oh that's true fair point yeah that's true okay then i was actually gonna vouch for it's reflective of something you could actually with the with the idle stances and you're observing your weapon so that that's cool and it and it works So are you thinking we're putting that we're inputting that? I like it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's right. mine. Okay. So, so it does help. Yeah. So we we have a taunt in. That's that's good. And then we have two victory poses, I believe, and that was the uh, animus victory pose and the uh, rest in peace with the kneeling. Yes. Yep. So right now my taunts are either in or next. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well so, i mean but i'm saying like so we have one more spot left so all we don't have to worry about mine anymore and jano i believe has one uh taunt still available that we believe and i have two yeah well i know i have three let's say so yeah you haven't listed yours yet uh my, my three were the juggling of the knives tossing the apple and then flourishing his sword saying we must never give up the fight right Yes, sir. Okay, so um, the sword is a is is again like as you already said, pretty pretty simple compared to the juggling and the apple. Um, one thing that I would say is that you can use the sword in his primary move set. 
so if you nix the sword, it wouldn't be the only time you can use it. You can, sure. you can very easily use it in multiple standard moves. Um, and you know, generally speaking, I'd say uh, what he's saying in his in his quote is is fairly uh, easy to associate with him. So it's a good move. And at the same time, I would just wager that the other three taunts that we have to choose between. Uh, being my eagle and then your apple and your juggling are all more interesting uh, by a considerable margin. Absolutely fair. Now, and I would say my favorite of Xantok, because I still, I, I really, we have the the one with the hidden blades already. I really mm-hmm. like the eagle. Um, I, I personally don't care for the juggling one. It just right. is very out of character. Fair enough. <laughs> Not so, every touch is in I, character, but fair enough. I prefer the uh, the Apple one better. I I do prefer the Apple one better, um, even though... Juggling, uh, I still feel like it's more in character and also represents something uh, integral to the Assassin's Creed overall storyline uh, in a very simple way. So there is that. Um, and if so I'm I'm kind of proposing here that if we're locking in taunts, we go for Mike's hidden blade, your apple, and my eagle. Makes sense I, to me. I like those three. Yeah. Okay. Nice. 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 And we already have two victory poses locked in, so uh, clearly the third one is going to be mine, where Fco actually like literally just kills somebody. <laughs> I'm thinking not. I oh, okay. Per, again, personally, me way off trail loves it. <laughs> For the game of Smash Bros, I I would love to see it, but unfortunately, <laughs> I don't see it happening. Let's be real. You want to see it happen to the Duck Hunt dog? No, I'd want to see it happen to uh, oh, who would who would be the best to see that happen to? Oh, it'd be, game it'd be, I want you to really think about this one, just to think of like. Just picture this in your mind, all right? You, now, pan down, and it's like Ness or Lucas. I was going to say Ridley. <laughs> See, Ridley would make too much sense, though. He's like also Ness a giant dragon. So how does no, that Ness make sense? Funny. Or King DDD. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to... Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> um, I pictured I'm it. Thinking... It was great. Yeah. Yeah, so we... we, we... Okay, so... You, you first you play as a me. Then you dress that me up as somebody you don't like. <laughs> and then you don't do that victory pose because that's a bad idea. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Instead, you make the me be Santa nice. Claus. Oh, okay. God. That would be sad. But is that... The, 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 the... Then Ezio would become the next... Person this is not Alan Team Allen. This is not Tim Allen. All right, so should we list them all again and then kind of see which ones we already have off and on, or either that we've already kind of used somewhere, or... I mean, we, we can just say the ones that have not been used or have not been nixed to make it go faster. Okay, okay for, right. I'm, I'm, I'm nixing one of my own, so I'm only going to give one. Okay. Uh, the okay. zoom in on Ezio where he smirks and falls off the ledge backward. Okay. That is a good one. Um, and then Lister's, he, he brought I, in the... I have the leap of faith or... into the wagon. And then uh, being hidden by the lovely courtesans, yes. <laughs> ah, man. These are all good. Dang. I, I like the idea uh, of having Leap of Faith be one of them. I, I, will, I will just be very sad for the eventual inevitability of the courtesans being cut. <laughs> I, I already know you guys aren't going to go for it. I already know. <laughs> I, I'm just making would, my would, disappointment would... clear. Um, I would... I... I, I like the idea. The sons. And now Mike can can dissuade me, and we'll move on to the other two. <laughs> uh, what did you oh. have left, uh, John, for victory poses? Um, or is all your stuff kind of bent just, somewhere? Just his, just his. Uh... Actually, no. Mine. I'm just going to kind of rescind because mine, other than the defeat, other than the holding the opponent near the floor. Which was semi pseudo a pseudo joke. Yeah. Um. They're they're just kind of ill fated uh, versions of what you guys are already working with. Um. Like 
uh, crossing his arms and and walking and turning towards the camera is, as he says, you know, the whole we work in the dark to save the light. That's better served in uh, your mic, your uh, victory pose. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, begin turning his back towards the screen with a smirk and walking away with the whole rest in peace thing that was already handled in yep. the kneeling, which was a lot better. So I am going to rescind from this. We're basically working between one of Mike's and, and then one of Lister's, the leap of faith or the backwards fall, which is, you know, kind of like another form of leap of faith. Yeah. They're both, very leap of they're, they're both essentially the right. leap of faith more or less. Yeah. Right. I would say right. add maybe an Eagle noise to the end of mine as he's falling and that might make it better. Right, or like not, they're both, they're both, they, they both can use the eagle pose. Or I, I remember seeing, um, you know, the animation of Ezio fa falling backwards, and and I oh, that's that right. A, there was an the one of the trailers has that, I believe. Yeah, so that was a very, very pertinent part of Ezio's history that you're that you're putting up for uh, for auction here. Funnily enough, the only thing that's keeping me from just saying. Maybe we should go with Mike's. Is that then Mike would have the full flush of the victory poses, <laughs> which hey could happen. It could happen. It could happen. I mean, I'm okay um, with it. I mean, one of them was one of my taunts got tweaked into a victory pose. Right, and that, sure, and that sure. happens too, often. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, listers, I also really like because you're. I think that. Okay, so here's how I would frame it. Ezio falling backwards is something that only Ezio does. Uh, Ezio falling into a hay bale is something that all assassins do. So do we want to That's represent true. more? Do we want to represent more Assassin's Creed as a whole? Or do we want to represent more Assassin's Creed 2? So that's the two angles that we're dealing well, with. Well, the only thing, though, with, uh, with uh, the idea, like, let's say um, if it was just any of the assassins, any of them could do the leap of faith backward. The thing that makes Xantox more unique to Ezio would be the whole getting up on the, you know, the ledge of the cart. Cause none of the other assassins would really do that. Maybe. Right. Plus, but... plus, I mean, it's, we don't really need to think about what would the other assassins do? Because let's be real. It's only ever going to be one Assassin's Creed character that would get the smash. It's not like we need to think about, right. okay, well, Ezio would do this, but I'll tell you, Altair would do this, or Cassandra would do this. They're not getting in. Right, right. Uh, I thought Haytham was a lock myself, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 never mind. Yep. <laughs> oh, spoilers for... Uh, spoilers! For, oh, yeah, like a nine-year-old. Yeah, I didn't know. And if you didn't know, Zelda is chic. Yeah, right? Fuck. Snape Damn it! Dumbledore. Whoa, those are fighting words right there. I, I I would have gone for the classic Final Fantasy VII spoiler, but you know, the remake happened, so technically it's kind of a an issue right now. Oh yeah, Zach dies. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, what I'm what I'm garnering here between the the two friendly compadres slash opponents in this victory pose battle is that we're kind of having this initial lean towards Lister's victory pose then. I mean, I have that lean. I mean, <laughs> I like mine, just saying. Okay. It, it's basically what here here's the real issue. Let's boil it out to what's actually the differences here. One is we start off with just looking at Etsy normally, he smirks, and then you see him fall backwards and it's a bit of a perspective change than what we normally see for victory pose. The other one is we see the wagon, and we see him fall into the wagon, and he just leans his way out of it partially. These are the key differences here. It's, yes, both of them are jumps, but it's more like what one is for perspective change. One is he leans out of a hay bale after the jump. So do we want to see the jump, or do we want to see what he does after the jump? It's either, yeah, you're either seeing like before he goes, or you know, before and like the moment he goes, or you're seeing the after. Right. Right. Personally, so I think the did... after is more interesting. What What if you did both, or you have him fall backwards and then you shift again 
into falling into the hay bale. Yeah, and how long? Should, how long are uh, victory poses? They can be somewhat mm, long. Not, not long yeah. enough to combine both ideas completely. You could do it to where we see him first, and then we see him fall backwards into the hay bale. But to continue it from there would be too long. Or oh, you cut, was... you, th you see him smirk, fall back, and then it cuts to him like in the hay bale, leaning out. Like you kind of cut uh, off the falling in type deal. But yeah, it's kind of weird that and way. And then he he hops out of the hay bale. And he starts dancing, and you realize that you're you're in the uh, assassin's then creed. Yeah, then he starts juggling uh, knives, and there's courtesans, yeah. and, and then he uh, then Fortnite he kills Mario. For, then he kills Mario for fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh more. Oh boy. Okay, right, um, so the point is, we need to move on from here. We need to pick one now. We're spending too much yeah. time on this. Okay. And, and I'm kind of yeah. leaning toward mine. And I think Xantok's leaning toward his. So I think Jono, you're the third party. All right. Uh, difficult, difficult, difficult. I'm going to go. You're going to go with what? <laughs> you cut out. I'm, I'm, I'm in, oh, I did. Perfect. I'm going to go with Lister. Okay. On this. Uh, My just feelings for the sake of, are hurt. Your, your feelings are hurt, but your dignity is intact. I, I'm proud of you. Um, only, I, uh, there's really no particular reason for it. Um, I just went with. I think it's because we have a lot honestly, of serious stuff for uh, Ezio. At least I, my, a lot of my stuff is more like serious. I don't really have true. it, and I think that would be nice to kind of lighten him up a little bit. Show more of his that's personality true, because... besides just the murderous side of him. Yeah, right. No, I don't get me wrong. Because... I understand why I lost. <laughs> that's good that you did because I didn't actually have a reason. I just, I just kind of went for it, and I was just like, we need to move on from this because I liked them both. You know this episode. Yeah, yeah we, oh, we so spent way too long on that. <laughs> so the Kirby hat, though. Kirby that's hat. That's going to be pretty easy. Right? Oh, let's do this one real quick. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. Uh, can I start? Uh, three, two, one. Yeah. Three, three two, two, one. one. Ezio's cow. Ezio's hood. Yeah, Ezio's hood, but also his full body suit, and he's riding on a white horse. Oh, no. sign me up. So so I, okay. I think it'd be funny if... He wasn't just wearing the hood on his head, but like it's around his body because Kirby is just that small. Oh, that'd be like funny. Like he's technically oh, yeah. in the hood. It's not that he's wearing the hood; yes, it's more like I... the hood is wearing him. Let's just be honest. That is very. That's that one we can. I think we just all say, "Yep, move on." Uh, Kirby you know, hat is generally one. the easiest thing. Oh that yeah, was easy. I don't think we've ever had a moment where one person says something else seriously. I'm looking at you, Jono, yeah. for the Kirby hat. It's what always been a fairly simple thing. What if he sucked at Etsy up and suddenly had a a red headed mop of hair and framed glasses? Or was Desmond? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, anyway. just, it's just it's just Desmond's head on Kirby's body. That's that's no. I'm moving on to <laughs> special moves now. The real meat of the move set, and this is where we can spend the rest of our time on. Yeah. So uh, what we'd like to do with these is we go standard special, standard special, standard special, and then we do our sides and our ups. And much like with the taunts and victory poses, after we've gone through all those, then we start plugging in things. Because sometimes a standard special might turn into a side. You never know. Right. Like the Gengar episode, which we were talking about prior to, to starting this recording. Yeah, Shadow Punch uh, went in a couple directions. Yeah, that was that was a thing and Shadow Ball we had a lot of too. the same... Yeah, we had a lot of the same move ideas, but then they, they were utilized in totally different ways. Yeah. And there was a lot of workshopping. Yeah. It was it was fun and, and also just a little meticulous, but it was meticulous fun. So we'll see where this goes. Yep. Um gosh, I don't I haven't even been kick, keeping track. Who who's supposed to really kick things off here? I think it might be Lister. I'll go ahead and kick it off with my first well, not my first, but like my standard special, the hidden gun. Ooh. So, Ezio doesn't just have hidden blades. He has a hidden gun as well. And I see this standard mm -hmm. special being used in one of two ways. A simple tap of the special button, he just holds his arm out, and it just fires really quickly. It's fast. It's, I wouldn't say in, near instant, but it's pretty damn close to near instant. Small amount of damage. Or you can hold the button down, charge up a little bit as you're aiming, and a thin line will start to appear out from Ezio's arm as he's putting it forwards at this point. Fire the mm -hmm. hidden gun. It's still really fast, but the opponent knows that it's coming now because you're aiming it right in their face. 
But if they manage to get hit because they're dumb, they don't get out of the way, it's going to do more damage. Um, what's funny is that I have a very similar standard special, but I use a different weapon. I'm going to guess so, the throwing uh, knives. No, mine is the crossbow. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, he breaks out a crossbow and and shoots it forward, and, and uh, basically, depending on the charge, you're dealing with standard bolts or a much more devastating fire bolt that, uh, that travels further and also deals more damage with a fiery, but maybe potentially explosive effect. And uh, for the heck, I, I pulled, I did a lot of workshopping with looking at uh, Soul Calibur 5 moveset of Etsy as well to pull from this. So I also pulled uh, the fancy name of his uh, Latin rest in peace that I shall not dare to attempt to pronounce again. Um, and I and I placed that as the move name just for an extra flash for, okay. for no reason. All right. Yeah. Way of Trail, what do you got for us? So, Zantok, you had his hidden gun. Jono, you had his crossbow. I had throwing knives. <laughs> there it is. Does there he just juggle them? Uh, he does, yeah, he juggles them, and then, you know, no. no. Uh, <laughs> it's a, he holds it, and then that you can, you can charge it up, and uh, the more damage you do, obviously, the longer it was held. Um, mm -hmm. And he throws it, because uh, he... He has, like, his gun he had, but he didn't really, I mean, it was a very, very basic gun. But uh, he didn't really get it, I think, until, like, later in the game, I think about it. Um, but just a, uh, and the, cro the crossbow's good, too. I like all three of them. I like all three of them because they're, a we all are, I think, on the same track with it. It'll just be a, what would make more sense, I think, after we, uh look at the others not just that but right what some where some of these other ideas might be able to work such as my side special the throwing knives <laughs> there, it is. there it is so uh the way i have the throwing knives work is again if you just do a simple tap on the side special he's just going to throw one knife forward it's relatively slow but it's going to do a bit more damage because you know it's really obvious that it's there and if you don't if you're in its way you're a fucking idiot but you can also tilt the control stick uh, slightly up and or down to throw it in different directions or if you uh, just hold it down and you tilt the control stick as you're going he will continue to throw out knives up to three so you can either just throw That's... one or you can throw three and then angle them around a little bit holding it down doesn't increase the damage it's just essentially how fast in a row do you want to throw them right okay. that that's uh that's good i was not expecting the throw up oh. I, I should have, but I didn't. You should have. Uh, but my side special, my side special is. So uh, Ezio can directionally toss a smoke bomb. So we're kind of on the same on the same page here because I think we both saw Assassin's Creed gameplay where you can kind of lean into where you're able to toss the bomb because you get that directional arrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, right, so you can that basically. I'm not sure if that would actually appear on screen, but basically you can angle the toss of the smoke bomb, toss it near or far at some sort of diagonal arc if you want to. Of course, you can toss it just straight ahead too. And uh, but the whole point of it is it goes off. It's uh, it's far less meager than Mike's uh, small smoke bomb in the taunt, where it's a full-on smoke bomb. It uh, spreads out a lot like the uh, the item in Smash that I'm forgetting the name of right now that attaches the, to you. The that's smoke ball. The smoke ball. Yeah, the, sm the smoke ball. One of the yeah, worst so the items in the game because it's so stupid. It doesn't really do a whole lot, does it? It does nothing. But um, <laughs> Exactly. But this would actually have a chance of incurring uh, dizziness or, or tripping or similar effects so Ezio can get in there and attack his incapacitated opponents as they're under the smoke bomb's effects. And I would I would wager that there's minor damage to be had to, but it would be fairly small because it's just it's just a little bomb. So it's kind of less of a smoke ball, smoke bomb, and more of like a stun bomb. Right, right. And yeah. I couldn't remember if Ezio had those in his game, so I just went for the smoke bomb. No, let's ask the expert. Uh, uh, he had only smoke bombs, or uh, nothing okay. like. Uh, okay. He didn't have any of that type of stuff yet. Right. Okay. So I was, uh, I was just angling it from. You know, like he tosses a smoke bomb in Assassin's Creed, it basically has a similar effect on your opponents where they're incapacitated. Mm-hmm. 
So that's where I was coming from. Or you can actually probably attach the actual effect to the smoke bomb and just forego the dizziness or tripping, uh, make it less hallucinogenic, make it more like an actual smoke bomb, and have the opponents coughing, and that's how they're incapacitated. Maybe yeah. I thought too much. Yeah, so, there you go. Okay, so they cough. They cough. Uh, how, how about you? <laughs> Way off trail. Uh, so mine was a little more simple. Uh, he's kind of more of a close-range fighter than a long-range fighter. So I have him for a side special lunging out with his uh, hidden blades. Okay. Okay. Nice. So uh, he kind of he you can almost charge it if you want, but he lunges out with that hidden blade, and he can do pretty quick attacks with the um with the hidden blades. He's a lot faster with those than like a regular blade. Mm-hmm. Because you oh, don't yeah, you only sure. need to swing your arms for that. So. Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, well, I, I'm down with that. I, I consider doing something with the hidden blade as one of his specials, but I was just like, you know what? Let's go with some more some otter stuff and like his standard moves or his smash attacks his aerials those can use the sword the hidden blade but who knows we'll see i think uh i think something that can offer that move a little more punch um to make it more of a special move too is if you make it a little more visceral maybe when he leans into his hidden blades to attack an opponent there's a bit of a stick so you you punch them it's it's uh pretty more yeah it puts puts them them in the crumple state like reuse gives them a control. yeah exactly that's what i was thinking and then you just pull back and you can kind of feel that it was a very powerful blow yeah so there there there's a way to include that as a as a uh special yeah for the most I part with also get to in a few yeah and for the most part with any of the assassin creed games uh like you can get swords and blah 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 but really most of the time they use their main weapon is the hidden blade right 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 um okay so up specials huh yep so for up specials okay. i've got two here one of them uh <laughs> it's gonna be a little more quicker to talk about the other one is well i'm kind of inventing something a little bit so simply enough like the first the first one is synchronization it's it's a teleport oh nice. he vanishes uh you see the oh. typical ad- the animus uh flashing effects he vanishes as if he was desynchronizing at that point, but then he resynchronizes somewhere else on the stage, and you can alter where that's going to be with the control stick. Hmm. The other that's idea nice. I had, which is a little bit, uh, it, it's not necessarily true to the game. So, Leonardo has the flying machine, right? <laughs> but it, uh, the, yeah, the way the flying machine works in Assassin's Creed just would not work in Smash. That's, that's, it, it can't. It can't. It can't work that way. Mm-hmm. Gl- gliding mm-hmm. was nicked after Brawl for a reason. Mm-hmm. So I decided, you know what? Let's say that Leonardo is allowed to make a few modifications to the flying machine, specifically for Smash. There's, there's been cases with other characters before where this happens. Uh, Zero Suit Samus's jet boots were completely invented for Smash. <laughs> they never existed before. So what I'm kind of saying is we have the flying machine, but it's been retooled in a way that kind of... Instead of list, instead of he jumps down and flies, it's more like it propels him upwards. Not quite mm-hmm. like a jetpack, but you know, just like a little a little bit of propulsion. But instead of just being like a straight shot up, because that's boring, he instead spirals as he's um, propelling upwards. And as the move ends and he's reaching the height of where it takes him, the wings unfurl and they smack anyone to the side of him who's right there. Kind of like uh, Fox's Firefox, but with an extra kick at the end. Nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I was laughing because you will not believe me, but I had a very similar idea. Of course you did, because you always steal my ideas. Yeah, I do. While we just pinball. Um, yep. Oh, but I beat you to the punch on that one. That was a good one. That was fun. Uh, <laughs> so mine was also incorporating the flying machine. Uh, I'll give it to you. Yours is a lot more inventive. Mine was just a straight shot up, as it is, because I'm the more boring version of you. And uh, and I was also toying with the idea of him using a fly, uh, flying eagle and and holding on to that. But we already we also already incorporated that into the taunt, so I decided to go with the flying machine for my pitch. Um, funnily enough, I also was like, maybe it can descend into a glide afterwards, but... I understand why you would be against that, so I'm not going to push on it. Right. 
And but uh, but there is another individual here who has a special to pitch us. So let's hear it. All right. Uh, so you guys <laughs> actually did pretty well with the uh, Da Vinci bringing him in because I did the same thing. Naturally, I mean, what <laughs> else is the first up? There's really nothing to do. Except I actually am gonna give uh, um, Ezio something that Leonardo actually gave him to use for flying. Oh, uh, not a flying machine, but it in the game. Uh, he gave Ezio a parachute that Ezio mm -hmm. actually uses as a main way to get about. Um, not He doesn't use it a lot, but it's, it's something he does have access to. So what I'm thinking for him is he does like a little little parkour jump up to get himself a little more height um, to help save himself. But then he, uh, he throws out the parachute and it's like an old time, you know, it's a brown old timey parachute, not super right. great. Mm -hmm. And... He can use it to kind of slow fall. It, he, he can't really, like... Like, like he can't he do, like, what umbrella. Peach does with her umbrella. Yeah. No, he can't just hover in one spot. He slow falls after that. Right. Right. Okay. It's a simpler move, and, it, and but it calls more towards the actual game, so I like... That's uh, something to consider for when we reach the end of our endeavors with the special moves, I suppose. Indeed. Uh... Yeah, so what's your next one, old, old uh, Listy Poo? Well, my next one is, uh, you know, it's the most common down special in the game. Oh, okay. it's a counter. It's a counter. It's a counter, but, but you know, unlike some counters, I've actually made, you know, it's thematic. Uh, I, I, when I was doing a little bit of research on Etsy, I was reading up on some things he can do. One of the things I noticed that apparently he has... Not, not re he can't really mess with time at all, but when he's using his eagle eye or his eagle vision, he can kind of see, he can perceive time moving around him slower, so he can anticipate attacks coming towards him. So I figured, you know what? He's using his eagle eye. He can see that he's being attacked. You activate it. It's a counter. He, um, he's being hit by an attack, but instead, he pushes forward with his hidden blade, takes them down. They fall into a crumple state. Now they're on the floor. You shouldn't have fucked with an assassin, bro. <laughs> nice. That's uh, that's a good way to also incorporate Mike's other idea for the side special into a, into uh, a counter, like a uh, a move that would be more useful in the, in the scope of Smash. I, I would feel. So there's that. That's that's good. Mine is um, similar in a sense. But it's I didn't have it written down as a counter. Uh, mine is another one that I pulled from Soul Calibur Five, mm -hmm. but it's also, it also works in a separate way to that, uh, called Strike and Loot. So uh, you know an, an integral part of Assassin's Creed gameplay is is often uh, sneaking behind a NPC or an enemy and and looting what what's in their pockets, stealing what's on them. So with this. I have Ezio reaching out with his hidden blades and jamming them into the opponent, as we've all three talked about at this point. But there's also the added benefit with this down special of him being able to steal a an item that's on hand from an opponent with the move. Oh, I'm not okay. sure if it, it... Yeah, it can be a, a counter. I don't have it listed as one because I think it would be... Uh, function uh, be more useful for Ezio to have it be a non-counter move in this case so but maybe either that or you can argue that it might be too OP and it has to be a counter there's, there's that argument too um, and then I also had it in I'm not sure if this is too complicated but I had it in to where because with strike and loot in Soul Calibur 5 you can loop it into a hidden gun attack as well so I also have it where if you press the special button in quick fashion after engaging that initial hidden blade he pulls out the hidden gun and shoots him at close range as well I, i'd say this probably should be separated into different attacks because okay. that's a lot for for, like, for a more traditional fighting game that makes sense but for mm -hmm. a smash mm. yeah okay or... well why not you know take a little bit of what both of you said because that's what i did funny enough before you guys <laughs> said it so Yes, mine is a counter, like Xantox. <laughs> However, with mine, one thing Ezio does do when he is fighting someone, he will counter them 
kick them away and take their item. So I was thinking, if they do not have an item, it's just a regular counter where he slashes back. And the other way would be where he, um, he'd kick them back, but he would take whatever item it is they have. I like that a lot. Nice. That, yeah, that's really good. That works. Mm-hmm. All right, so with our main special moves uh, all gone over a little bit here, let's go ahead and jump into what final smashes we've all come up with. Now, I had I had one originally that was uh, an assassination that Etsy would perform, where he would knock somebody into an animation, and then he pulls them into the hay bale, assassinates them, and just it ends there. But I, after I yeah. thought about that one, she's like, you know what? I've got a better idea. And I call this a glitch in the animus. Because, oh boy... There ain't just one assassin in this final smash. So, he's going to dash forward with his hidden blade. Anybody that he hits gets knocked to a cinematic effect. And it's going to be very similar to Mega Man's final smash because you're going to see not just Ezio, but you're going to see Altair, Edward, Connor, Arno, Dorian, Bayek, Alexio, Cassandra, the new guy from Valhalla, who I think is Ivor, Ivor, I don't know how to pronounce that. That's an odd name to me. But... Them and any other assassin that you can think of will appear in the final smash. They're all going to do a quick attack against the opponent using some attack that's pretty symbolic. And like uh, Connor might use his hatch. I think Connor has hatchets, right? Or it might yep. be Edward, one of them. Altair has the sword of Altair. Kind of makes sense. But then it'll finish off with uh, with Ezio coming in for one last slash with his hidden blade, knocking him out. And if they had enough damage on them already when this final smash ends, they might just automatically be down because that's an assassination with that hidden blade. Nice. Nice. I, I like that. I like that. Um, for me, I have two separate propositions. Um, one is also something that could be looped into an instant KO. Um, in this, it, it reminds me kind of like the uh, Meta Knight's Final Smash in a sense of just the dark qualities of, of it where he uh, Ezio pulls an opponent in and, um, with his hidden blade if he strikes them he pulls them into a quick animation where they are you know let's say on, on top of a uh, rooftop somewhere and he, and he stabs into them and I was think I of course came up with this over the course of the podcast I was like hey we can still incorporate Mike's Victory Post somewhere potentially where you can stab into the opponent and then look towards the camera and fall back uh, like, uh, you know, the leap of faith backwards with that iconic look before returning out of the cinematic bag and falling back onto stage. Simple. Uh, the second one is incorporating the Apple of Eden. And I, was, he, uh, I feel like Apple of Eden would be good here. Yeah, yeah, like you, you, you grab, he grabs it and it's activated and... and just like in the games, you can kind of walk around with it and have those surges of sheer light energy just pour out of it in these deep pulses and and really desperately hurt opponents within a certain radius. So there's that too. And those are my two proposals. All right. I have one to propose for a final smash. Uh, so for mine, it's um, kind of a... Um, Kind of to help with the Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, because uh, he he was one Ezio was one that really helped the Brotherhood kind of become a thing. So it's called Call to Arms, and what this ability it he Ezio has this ability in the game where uh, over time he can charge up this Call to Arms, and when he uses it, like there's a bunch of opponents or one harder opponent, he uses it, and a bunch of the assassins that he recruited will come out of the woodwork like they either come out of um uh right they yeah. come out of either like you know they're off of roofs they do they do leaps of faith they come out of hay bill whatever it is and they go after the target and they just start fighting them so i thought it would be kind of neat and a little bit different of a to kind of make a very different type of uh, final smash than anything that's really been done is um it creates when he does the call to arms. So a, uh, however many players there are, an assassin would appear by them and start fighting them, almost like the um, old. Uh, I can't remember the names of some of the other ones, but the old Little Mac trophy, assist trophy, where he'd come around and fight for you. Very right. similar. So to basically, those types. this final smash summons 
three assist trophies onto the field, essentially. Yes, yes. And they would start fighting for a set amount of time. Interesting. And they, would, and they would obviously be rather strong attacks. Yeah. Right. But each one would be more focused on one particular player so as not to totally overwhelm them. But you would still be able to go in and fight as well as your normal self. Right, right. Okay. Interesting. What, what, I feel like Lister was on the tip of a thought. The, the only thought I really have on it is um, it, it feels like a Final Smash that we would see back in the Brawler Smash 4 days where something is happening on the stage at the same time you can go do shit. Ultimate, for better or worse, is kind of arguable either way you want to think about it. Made things a lot quicker and, as Zachary said, to the point, which in some cases I agree with, some cases I don't. And Final Smash yeah, is... like Wario Man was just BS. Or, okay, I've or never, the one for Pit, too. I've never got a yeah. chance to play Ultimate. Mm-hmm. I did mm-hmm. have another idea that's oh. still called that was still called to arms. I just like that other one better. Yeah. But I didn't mm-hmm. realize that they made it like a shorter thing. I mean, even though they did, that doesn't mean we have to with our stuff with our stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the the other idea I had at first was the call to arms also does um where depending on how long you hold the you hold that call to arms, either you summon the assassins or you summon a volley of arrows hidden arrows from the assassin and you don't even okay. see them and they just these arrows come and shoot out of nowhere and just start taking down taking down enemies I so like i was that. thinking this it would be like arrows would rain from the sky and if you get hit by one of them like you have a chance to maybe dodge them but if you get hit by any of them then you get like heavy damage right that's right. pretty interesting i'll also say that on a smaller scale, that's also something that could potentially be something for the effect of an extra skill. That's also true. That's, yeah. Like, it uh, wouldn't be, like, a huge volley, but, like, I don't know, air, arrows flying from somewhere, or maybe, like, an archer or an assassin appears next to him with arrows. I, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's right. Oh, that that's that's true you can you can actually that could if we nix it as a final smash if that's where we end up going i'm not saying it is um it could actually be a a, a, a very good extra skill to have a call to arms where you bring in an assassin to help you fight fight for you Mm -hmm. kind of like uh kind of like with the diver on smash topia where my thing was having him having the diver summon a penguin to help fight or kieran (laughs) Right, right. Uh, naturally, a summoning character. Other, other, other characters from the Fire Emblem. So, so there's, uh, there are no summoning characters in Smash, and I, I do like the idea of having attacks that have a summoning element to them. I guess Duck Hunt has one, but eh. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the, the idea um, of summoning up somebody that can do an attack for you, I do like that idea a lot. Right, right. Um... And I mean, the only other idea that I could have had for a potential adaptation of Mike's Final Smash is also if you mix it in with a uh, with the cinematic that is more common in Ultimate, uh, you can have the Call to Arms be a cinematic where you know maybe Ezio sure. stabs forward with the hidden blade at first, but then uh, but then you have him on the streets of say uh, Florence or or Venice, and he is. Uh, lifting his arm up to call the other assassins to arms and then collectively they all run towards it and you see a big slash just go across the screen and then they're sent flying out the map could be something like that potentially like a merger of call to so, arms and glitch in the animus mm-hmm. right right it's like it's yeah so it's a merger of both of them and you know it can also be a call to arms of the other assassins you did one uh, where he's summoning them as he would in his game, but then it turns out it's just uh, these other uh, prominent figures from Assassin's Creed history. So, so there's uh, there's there's ways to adapt that. That's true in in that sense. Uh, but that's I don't even know what the count is if we consider all these variations for the final smash as well as just the other. We'll figure it out. I would say out. nix my the... nix my assassination. We'll that's we'll you... figure it out. Yeah, yeah. We will. <laughs> all, right, all right, should we jump to extra skill first? Yes, we should. Because that's, okay. you know, what we do. Uh, I don't remember. 
I know. <laughs> I know. So okay. for my extra okay. skill, I had two things written down. One of which was uh, the smoke bomb idea. Uh, similar to John's, except, you know, I don't have an effect that necessarily impedes the enemies. It's more like, here's a giant cloud of smoke that's very difficult to see through. Maybe he's there. maybe he jumped up a platform and you thought he was down below it still, but you now you just miss and he's able to take you down. Who knows? But the uh, the other idea, which is very much unlike any other extra skill we've ever discussed, either on the podcast or on the wiki itself, it's free running. So Ooh. characters can you know in Smash characters can jump off walls. They can cling onto walls and figure out what they want to do in a second after that. But we don't have a character that can wall climb. And this isn't necessarily a wall climb. It's more of a a vertical jump of sorts. So let's say uh, Ezio, he, he's tried to get back up to the stage. It's got a wall down its side. So it's not like Battlefield. It's more like uh, Yoshi's Island from Brawl. But he couldn't get up high enough. And he's wall climbing. He's like, shit, what do I do? Well, activate your extra skill, free running. He does a vertical jump up a set distance and if he can reach the edge or higher he's back on the stage if he doesn't get there he just falls down because well you're out of options dude mm-hmm. nice. it's, it's an extra way that you can try to recover in certain scenarios right right that's a that's a good idea i i like that a lot actually i know you're kind of had trepidation about it but I think it. I think it would be incorporated well into Smash. Um, by comparison, uh, mine was since I didn't actually incorporate a, a counter into my set when I was making it, I, um, which was just enacting Eagle Vision, which, funnily enough, we talked about earlier, um, which is in Assassin's Creed, you you are able to enact Eagle Vision, which allows the assassin to uh, pinpoint certain objects, but also uh, swap between whether I mean differentiate friend from foe, so like NPCs are colors colored uh, blue, and like key characters like characters that would be like called to arms I believe would be colored gold if I'm remembering, and enemies would be red. So Eagle Vision's activated. Uh, his enemies are colored a certain color for a short period of time, and everyone who attacks Ezio, who is viewed as an opponent, uh, you know, they get the hidden blade embedded in their neck. And it's a, it's a simple counter. But if they are a friend and they happen to hurt him, even in a team match with, say, friendly fire on, he will not uh, hurt them. He will, shove, he will instead shove them aside. So that was that. And it was a it was a cooler move when we didn't have counters to us to consider. But <laughs> The aesthetic's nice. <laughs> uh, well, mine, um, there's a weapon that none of us have mentioned yet um, that is actually one of, I would say, the more fun uh, mm-hmm. weapons that Ezio has at his disposal. And mm-hmm. so this attack would be called uh, his poison needle. Ah. Ooh. So he has two types of poison needles. He has... Um, one one type where it you know poisons them and they die. Um, the other one he has is like berserk needle too, where he mm-hmm. hits person they kind of go berserk and they actually attack their allies and stuff. The berserk yeah. one I could see maybe working like a team battle type setting, um, but I could see that one being kind of hard to play out. So I went with the poison needle. Uh, the poison needle, so it would be something that charges over time, and what he does is he puts on a uh, he kind of switches quickly yeah, either there might be an animation for it or not I haven't quite decided on that but um he has this poison and the next person he hits they get dealt you know they get dealt damage from the attack but then it kind of does the um like the the uh i can't remember the name of the flower um uh, that does damage over time oh the flower oh, effect uh, lipstick lipstick yeah. yeah um so it would be something like that where that even after he hits them and gets away from them, then that person is just going to be dealt damage over time. Right. Nice. Makes sense. I We've am. also discussed yeah. with other moves as well, like having an actual poison effect instead of just being like the flower, like, nah, man, it's, it's, it's fucking poison, dude. Like, come on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can we, can we just call it poison, Sakurai, please? 
<laughs> Although we do actually have poison now in Ultimate. Uh, it's not really, I don't think it's any part of the character's attacks, but um, with the spirits, with the spirit battles, there is poison statuses now, so that is the thing. That's true. Oh, well, That's if true. That, then that would be what, if there's a poison status, I, I wasn't aware, um, then that would kind of be more of the effect I'm going for, probably. We, we need to get you a Switch, man. I know. We do. <laughs> we. <laughs> we oh, you like want a to Wii U play. instead? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So now that we've discussed all the possible moves, we need to figure out what we're actually going to use for this character. I think the easiest place to start. Well, the easiest place to start is the up special. Are we doing the flying machine or are we doing the parachute? Ooh. Yeah. That is. That is the question. I have I have some thoughts on. Go for it. Or that, I'm sure that Mike is biased towards the parachute, and then you biased towards the flying machine. It's only natural. Um, so my thoughts are the parachute, uh, pulls more from the action source, where we, where we get to use something that Ezio uses and incorporates into his, uh, ensemble in Assassin's Creed. That was going to uh, be my argument as well. Right. So there's that. There is that. But then we also have to consider the more nebulous and fluid nature of Smash, where characters are always. Uh, John, stop. Yeah. yeah. You robotted. You're both robot. Oh. You you were only briefly right after that. John, I'll try speaking again. Uh, Try more than just an up. <laughs> well, I, I... That's better. I, let's have... Oh, maybe not. What's going on? Ooh. It got bad. Try again. Hello? Try more than just one word. <laughs> oh, yeah, see, yeah, you gotta do... Yeah. Hello. More than a word! The, the, the big purple dog leapt over the fence. The Martian King... Okay, you can stop. Alright, so just uh, just go back a little bit, because you were pretty goddamn bad. How about, how about maybe just, just try disconnecting and reconnecting real quick. I got him to leave. <laughs> oh. Uh, that did not. God damn it, Michael. Bubble. Didn't help very much. And yeah. So. Where are we at? <laughs> we were at with you saying. You, you were talking about Nebulous. Oh, okay. Okay, so. That, that pretty much the last coherent thing I heard was you saying where we get nebulous. Okay, okay. So we already got through the entire point about the parachute being from the actual source material. Yeah, okay. you got that. Okay. So, but we're also coming from this place with Smash where we don't always necessarily pull um, as dedicatedly from the source material, or at least not in the most typical way because it's more of this uh nebulous and fluid landscape that we're working with to build move sets like most times especially in later games i would say that sakurai works very hard to incorporate as much that is pertinent to the actual character as possible and how they operate in their own games uh earlier on less so like uh ness learning most of his moves from paula supposedly outside of smash when he was learned that he got an invitation yeah or, or lucas with kumatora or um or just dredging something up from the earth for a character uh like Sheik. You're like, oh Sheik is a ninja, let's give Sheik a general ninja moveset. Let's give Captain Falcon this thing, you know? Or uh or like a character like Fox who never actually fought from outside of the R Wing or, or the Landmaster prior to Smash, that sort of thing. Or if you want to go later on into the series too, um characters like Zero Suit Samus having the 
uh, freaking jet boots, which are absurd, and uh, Olimar using Pikmin that are not present in his games, that sort of thing. So I, I wouldn't necessarily fault the flying machine just for just for that. So uh, the the one thing I will say to that is, well, while that's true, um, characters aren't necessarily always straight from the source material. The third party characters do tend to be a little bit more tried and true because they've got to get the approval of their company owners. That said, Joker, the Rebellion Gage isn't a thing in Persona Five, so that's that's kind of a right. thing that they made up. So it's mm -hmm. not necessarily 100% straight from the source material, but Sakurai has done a lot better with that, with like Smash 4 and Ultimate, especially in regards to the third-party characters. Sonic, two spin dashes in a spring, but that was also the Brawl days. Right, right, that's true. Um, gosh, it's it's uh, difficult to say because I like the idea of, as a, as a move of your up special best lister mm -hmm. but then mike's also pulls from the source, source material and then you bring up that point with the third parties so that throws a, a minor wrench what what are what are we thinking here the the way i look at the way i'm kind of looking at it is like if i'm using this character in the game what move is going to feel more satisfying for me to use and i'm going to enjoy using um the, the parachute, while you could get some great height with it, you can kind of slow fall and land where you want. I'm also going to be open to attacks pretty damn bad with that. Yeah. But with, yeah. with doing the um, the flying machine either way, while it is kind of, you know, taking a few liberties, it's a lot quicker, it's more to the point, and I can get right back into what I'm doing and I can be offensive with it. That said, it's also very similar to Fox Falco Wolf. Right, right. Um, I'm leaning flying machine personally. That's that's uh, and it makes sense. Like reasons you already listed. Yeah. If like yeah, Da Vinci made him a smaller, more portable, like quick use one that doesn't necessarily which Da Vinci do could totally original. do. Yeah, and so like, and I'm I'm down with that. I get it. The the only version is do we want to do the one where he spirals and then s s swings out his wings, or do, we, or do we want to do the one where he just quickly jets one direction as john has suggested uh i would go i would go with the spiraling myself just because it's more of a more fantastical which i feel is more characteristic of the kind of thing da vinci would go for boy um i'm i'm kind of okay with either personally mm-hmm mm -hmm. So, unless, I guess, Antog, are you going for your own? I mean, I would go for mine because I think that's a little bit cooler than... Like, if it was just a spiraling, then it's really no different from the straight shot. But seeing the wings, like, flap out for a final hit, that's fucking awesome looking. Right, right. I, yeah. Am I the okay. tiebreaker on this one? I think I'll have to go with, uh... How much I'd hate to agree with him. I think I'm going to have to go with Zantok on this one. <laughs> That's a win in my book. All right. Yeah, I was I was going to go for Zantok's too. All right. So let's let's quickly try and get through uh, the rest of these because we're running a little bit low on time here. Uh, right. Down special. We have we have the counter version. We have one where it's a hit and then a steal, and then we have like a counter and then the steal. Wait, wait, right. wait, would you quickly go uh, go over your version of the down special again for me? Uh, so if the person isn't carrying an item, mm -hmm. uh, then he would just do like a normal counter. However, if and, and do damage. If they are carrying an item, it would do a steal animation where it would steal the item from them. And then he could use the item for himself, but they wouldn't get dealt damage that time. Okay. So, oh, so they wouldn't take damage if it's steal. Correct. Interesting. Okay. So the differences between our two versions of the counter is uh, I have a crumple state. You do not. But if they have an item, they steal it. And if they, but they don't take damage. But if there's no item, they do take damage. Yes. I like that idea a lot. And it plays into the lore of the game where he can st he steals their weapons. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's very similar to Jono's uh, rendition of the Soul Calibur 5 attack where he hits somebody and steals something from them as well. Yeah, I think we're all right there. Yeah. 
I, I'm, I'm good to go with your person. I was going to say I would go with Mike's. I would also go with mine. <laughs> naturally, naturally. Now, oh, I don't, what is... now, I don't think you had a name for yours. Do you have a name you'd like to use? Uh, I did. Um, down special. It was just called, oh, I think it was just called Counter because it is, that, that is actually what the movie is called in Assassin's Creed. Fair. That, that is unfortunately right. true. It's unfortunately the name of it, yes. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at the Soul Calibur 5 version of the movie for the name. However, I do like the name, uh, what was it, Counter and Loot? Was that the... Uh, strike and loot was what it was called in Soul Calibur Five. Counter and loot makes sense to me. Counter and loot, okay. I like. I like that because okay. there's a looting feature as well, right, in the game. True, true. So okay, we got we got her up, we got her down. Okay, so next? let's look at the final smash next. I think. Okay, um, let me just go and take the uh, assassination animation that I propose. Just nix that because I think that's a more streamlined and less exciting version of what you and Mike have already proposed. Mm -hmm. So okay. there's that. Um, so we're, we're talking Apple of Eden versus multiple different potential iterations of Call of Arms and then his and Lister's Glitch in the Animus. Which is fairly similar to one of the versions of Call to Arms. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the Apple of Eden is probably the most indicative of something you take away from the game and, and feel um, is most memorable in my opinion, but it's also the... I don't know. It's it's funny because it's such a flashy object and so pertinent to the lore of Assassin's Creed, yet it's also I feel like kind of the underdog in terms of the final smashes because you're walking around slowly with this, uh, with this apple. No one can hurt you while you hold it, um, but you, it's... Uh, it's it's smallly utilized because you can also only cover a certain amount of, of space while while using it to shock opponents. Um, it, it's kind of like, it would kind of be like Rosalina's final smash, which is generally considered one of the worst. Oh yeah, but but better than that. <laughs> <laughs> better, a lot better than that, because I'm thinking of you know walking around with it and pressing the B button to engage in that very heavy surge. Yeah, almost like charging uh, would... it up, charging up the surge type deal. Right, right. Like you can quickly tap it and get longer range out, maybe. But if you mm -hmm. hold it, you it you can maybe charge up a bigger, but it doesn't go as far. Right, right. So it, it would it, if it hits an opponent, it, it's going to deal a lot more oomph than that. Um, generally speaking, um, then there's the the issue of the call to arms. Uh, I'm personally feeling like I don't know where you all stand with it, but with Lister's comment on how Final Smashes have become more streamlined, I feel like it's a great idea for the Brawl era of Smash. But in, in this uh, in this landscape, it might be uh, more pertinent if you did it in the way that I kind of m proposed of uh, engaging in a cinematic call to arms. Uh, just, my, just my opinion. Or we can actually go for the call to arms as an extra skill, more reminiscent of what Mike's already proposed, where Ezio, uh, you know, he, he does this call to arms, and an assassin, or, or maybe up to three, can appear on stage. I would say it's going to be an thing. extra skill. More likely it would be like uh, the Duck Hunt's down special, where he summons somebody, <laughs> then they do an attack. It's not like you're summoning multiple, they're all going to go rushing. It's more like, okay, you can have one guy that you might summon that shoots... A Fight for maybe three, arrows. five seconds. I would say it's more like they do an actual, like, either they hurl out a volley of arrows, maybe in, like, a spread pattern, or it's just a straight shot, or another one comes in, maybe he has a sword, and he rushes forward for a couple sword swings, or maybe there's one that, um, maybe he just that, throws a hatchet yeah. for a slower but more damaging projectile, and you can kind of I alternate with the working... control stick which one you summon. I can see that working in the sense that, um... I like having the As different the types. Yeah, like as opposed to, let's say if we did it more like how Mike initially proposed as an extra skill, you could probably only have one assassin on screen at a time for the sake of it being a fair extra skill. But in the in the case of having them be like instantaneous summons that come in, perform an attack, and leave, you can potentially stack them. Like say there's three or four different types of assassins, you can go, oh, this one attacks with hidden blade, this one attacks with sword, this one attacks with a with a Crossbow. Freaking crossbow. This one attacks with a the and then he stacks it up 
with a with the arrow volley maybe as a as a in the in the final chain and you can do all of that in in somewhat quick quick succession there, there probably needs to be a small cooldown in between each one because you don't just feel like to do instant between all of them because that's just be, be, right. be a little bit much but like maybe a couple seconds in between yeah right right i i really like that as an extra skill potential and then there's of course in the final smash game your uh glitch in the animus right right um i have a proposal for this okay. i don't know if you guys want to hear it right now or okay uh my proposal is that we just go for the gusto with the final smash and you know even and mike's been pulling for uh source material this entire time this would be total damnation of source material but um it would also be flashy and in the sense of ultimate and in the sense of brand marketing frankly for for ubisoft so i i think that glitch in the animus might be a good move to go with for the final smash and then we can do the call to arms that we've been talking about as the extra skill yeah I like that. It's a good That's... way to represent, uh, with with the final smash, the legacy of the Assassin's Creed. But then with the special, with the uh, with the extra skill, it's here's something that's unique to Ezio, something that he did as something that trained all these new assassins. And it's a summoning move that's just not something in Smash, which we really should have. Mm -hmm. Right. It would actually be a way, in my opinion, to better reflect um, in the current Smash landscape. Uh, Ezio's unique qualities in that sense. It would be it would be actually putting respect on him. So I, 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 I that's my opinion. I would like it. So yeah. All right. Yeah. So the little thing we have left is the standard special and the side special. Our three standards were all relatively similar, but all use different weapons between the crossbow, the hidden gun, and the throwing knives. And the side specials, uh, we have we had a lunge with the hidden blade. We had throwing knives, and then Shauna, what was your side special again? Uh, throwing the smoke bomb. That's right. Right. So, all I mean the the first the same special is fairly similar ideas. It's just which weapon we want to go with. On the side, it's all pretty different. I wonder if since we have um, Eagle Eye utilizing the hidden blade in a way, or not Eagle Eye, but um, the uh, the counter and loot. I wonder mm -hmm. if maybe we don't want to do the side special with it, but we don't. Right. But there's other characters that use the same similar ideas for multiple special moves so i'm i'm kind of torn i'm just kind of like right. where where i'm looking at a lot is like using as many of his different tools as possible right right mm -hmm. um shoot i was actually gonna, i was going to propose an ex, as an extra skill earlier oh he can choose between the hidden gun or the crossbow or the throwing knife but now we've gone a different direction that's much better true um so unfortunately, i do i do think the throwing knife should be one of the two moves yeah, I I, ag I agree, and I think because we've all kind of decided like a very similar one for the like either throwing knife, pistol, or crossbow for the first for his re regular special. I think maybe that should be the throwing knife. Okay. Right. Right. Then for the so what, special, Mike, do we do the lunge or do we do the uh, the, the smoke bomb? That's Cause... a good question. I'm thinking about it from the angle of what would work best in smash because they're both things that are available to Ezio to use yeah um because because he's more known for his close range attacks but we also have the close range attack um very well represented in the down special so if you wanted to vary it up it might be the smoke bomb uh my thoughts i would yeah, actually think definitely... go with the lunge i really I'm, I... I'm just i'm not enthused by the smoke bomb I would say when smoke bombs is like one of the things I never use in Assassin's Creed. So mm -hmm. that's me personally. Um, They're not that good. I never really liked them, but um, I think it, there's already kind of an, I, that, that smoke ball item. I know no one really likes it. And I feel like that would end up happening to that move. Yeah. I just feel like it wouldn't be used very much. I agree. I disagree, but it's your world and we're living in it. <laughs> and i feel like it's okay. more i mean i most of the time most of my things have been more lore based because that's kind of why i'm here i guess mm -hmm. yeah, sure. um so i i and it's mine so i think i would probably lean toward the hidden blade 
lunge and it because it, we i mean we show it a little bit but we don't really have it being used very much. even with the counter the counter most of the time isn't even with his hidden blades like he just like punches them and steals their weapon he doesn't even use the hidden blade for that right i mean one, one thing okay. you could say is that there there is still the standard moves the aerials the smash attacks the grabs the hidden blade can be used as well as uh, his swords or other weapons can still be used in those just because we're not saying that they're used doesn't mean that they're not used Though at the same time, um, we're already using the throwing knives as, as a standard, so the hidden blade as a we, we like Ryu, he he's a purely melee based fighter, so he's going to be using his hands and fists all, all the time. But you were you have that memorable down special from Ryu, which would act similarly to this hidden blade move. Yeah. Um. So enacting this hidden blade move, I I think that uh wouldn't be a bad move to go with myself now that i think about it more uh so I, I would be okay with with advancing that myself too okay and the only thing we have left to figure out with the moves is which version of the throwing knives are we going with are we going with the one where you just throw one or you can charge it to throw one for more damage or are we going with you can alter the angle or you can throw up to three at a time right um, um well normally he has uh, okay, I'm giving you the lore. Uh, normally, he he throws one, and it's usually just a quick. And you don't, like you don't even have to really aim the thing; it just automatically hits. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if the aiming would be necessarily needed there. Um, I think the charge would be just to make it more doable for smash. Um, I mean, but... there are characters that can angle uh, bow attacks like that. Yeah. Right, right. Um, a compromise could be, uh, because Listers, I think, feels more like a side special move, just in the way, in all the various ways that you can angle it. Fair. But if you if you if you work it in the sense of, maybe he can throw it up at a diagonal if you just tilt it diagonally, uh, as you activate the move. Um, yeah, that'd work. That that could that could work. That could yeah, that just could whatever direction you're facing. Move. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like right. that. And okay, and, and so I don't you know, know if there you go. Then I don't know if it needs to be charged. Then in that case, okay. And then uh, and I was, in that case, probably also you're not throwing multiple quickly. It's just you're throwing one, but you can angle which direction. Yeah, right. It can be charged. Um, I think that would be fine too to include both options. We can probably even discuss this off, you know, later on down the road when we put this course. on the wiki. So, um, but the general idea is throwing knives. They're there. Yep. Yep. Cool. We have a move set. We have a move set. There's only, we only have a few things left to discuss on Ezio, one of which being his unique traits or special abilities. We kind of mentioned before how some characters can wall jump or wall cling, such as uh, Mario can wall jump, obviously. And I believe Sheik and Greninja, I think, can wall cling. I might be wrong about that. But I was thinking, you know, Ezio, he's very much a parkour type of person. Wall jump, wall cling, and the ability to crawl all makes sense for him. And... I'm not sure if we want to do this, but I would like to go ahead and repropose what I had for the free running idea where call it a uh, vertical wall jump, if you will. If he's stuck in a wall and he's not quite at the ledge, maybe he does have, still have that ability to jump up, even though it's not an extra skill. It's more something that's just baked into his natural abilities. I, I like it and I'm cool with it. Uh, mine was very similar to that. It's that he can pretty much just climb up walls uh, short distance, like even if it's a a wall that has nothing to grip onto, he would be able to find the way of to course. get up it. So I, I I like your free running idea for this. It's very similar. Yeah, yeah. Me too. All right, so, so I'm like he's he's gonna have all yeah. of those then. Mm -hmm. He's a very mobile, versatile character. He can also do the duck walk. I'm moving on. <laughs> so, alternate costumes for Ezio. I mean, obviously he's going to be in his... I, I believe... I think his outstanding effort would be like more the Master Thief suit that he gets. His, mm -hmm. his iconic one instead of the one he starts out getting from his father. But there's a lot of ideas that you can go with for different costumes for him as well. Like, maybe one of them mm -hmm. is uh, him wearing uh, his father's outfit for an alt. Or I, I think there's another, like, an armored version that he can get later on in the game. Uh, even... I... Yes. Oh, go ahead. 
<laughs> I'll uh, say I have uh, I, two ideas for this one. Right. Uh, the, a bit of a, a crackpot idea that you could have, which would be bad but good. What if you? What if he's Desmond for one of his alts? Just just the one. But what if he's Desmond? <laughs> like no no outfit. He's not actually Etzel. Like you actually see Desmond. You're fighting as Desmond because you know he does pick up Ezio's skills. He does. Disturbing yet potentially brilliant. <laughs> so my idea for the alternate costumes was one of two. Either um, you could have him. This one I feel would be a little harder to do, so I'm just gonna promote it first to say, just say it because I think it'd be cool. Sure, but I don't think it'd be realistic. Would be having some of the other assassins from the other games like Bayak or Kenway. Um, but the thing is, then you'd have to change like because they would all have different Weapons. abilities and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking instead of that, one of the things that Assassin's Creed loves to do uh, as the games go on, you can unlock the outfits of previous yep. assassins mm -hmm. as you go so like one of the outfits you can always unlock is altair's so why not have one where you can get altair where you can get cassandra where you can get bayak or uh, arno um uh, the twins the there's so many like they all have a different outfit mm -hmm. and that would be i think perfect because then it doesn't just pay homage to just the Ezio 3 games, it gives homage to every Assassin's Creed game. Right. Yeah. The, the yeah. only difficulty I think they would have is that some of them are very close in terms of color. And they when are. you're in a match against multiple Ezios, it's going to be a little bit hard to differentiate. Really, the only two I ever, like, the only two I ever have issues with is actually Ezio's and Altair's. Which was one I was going to mention, or Alexio and Cassandra. Right, right, and that could uh, that could that could be easily altered yeah. as well. And that's yeah. yeah, that's not hard to alter too because uh, if there's some that are really close in color, um, a lot of the times during that when you play that Assassin's Creed game, like uh, Bayok, uh, one of my favorite outfits for him was it was just tinted orange, yeah. like it was just an orange, oranger of one. Course, but they all have your a different favorite. style. Yeah, they have a different style. Mm -hmm. I mean, right, one thing right. that might make it uh, easier to handle, but still kind of do that similar thing, is maybe half of the alts are the standard uh, Ezio look, but maybe and maybe the other half is Altair, or maybe instead it's like uh, the newest character and what his outfit is. That way, you still kind of have multiple ones represented, but le yeah, less similarity. How... Yeah, and then depending on how many you want, you can always pick some of the games to not have. Yeah. Like, I would say of the Assassin's Creed games, wasn't a fan of Arno Fair. very much. Like, he just wasn't as memorable. So I, I wouldn't see an issue of excluding his, or even Shay's. Eh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, at the same time, uh, Ezio's a male character. You can you can easily just pair it off to the male assassin uh, if getting those costumes in. Uh, mm -hmm. Prioritize. Um, just as a way to cut it down. I was also thinking... Uh, Ezio, we see him at different stages of his life throughout the three games that he's prominent in. Um, and we've seen it with other characters, too. Like, we have an old man in Dorf in Ultimate. Or, uh, or yeah, uh, so... There's actually... Uh, Ezio has an old man version. Uh, that's canon. Yeah, so what I was thinking is, like, you can have Assassin's Creed 2 Ezio, Revelations Ezio, Brotherhood Ezio, Old Man Ezio, and cycle through portions of his life within the different... Um, with within the different outfits, I'm not quite sure how we would work that out, but um, it's something to consider having him a age throughout his costumes. Well, that is certainly a, quite a few ideas that we can go with. Yeah, 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 it is. We, we might just have to narrow it down outside of podcast whenever it eventually gets <laughs> uploaded onto the wiki, which is slow going, but eventually they're all going to get up there. It's just it's a lot to go through everything that we discussed and get put up there. Yeah, it is. It is. And, uh, you know, with a, with the time that we have left, we can go and roll over that home stage option. Um, I, my idea was twofold where you can have just fighting within the animus, which I'm not sure what sort of special things that would entail. Just, Maybe certain platforms are loaded in because it's a computer program, essentially, and you can 
uh, load them in and out as they go around. They could come in different shapes and forms. So that would be interesting in itself with the with the background. Or uh, you can go on a tour of Italy or, or just uh, between the different major cities like Florence, Venice, Rome, uh, with moments where you load between the city sca- cityscapes with the Animus. Or you just go to whatever city was most prominent for Ezio, which would be something Mike would be more informed on than me. Florence. But Florence, Florence, definitely. Or, yeah, okay, so Florence. So those are three ideas for me. Boom. But mine was uh, kind of combining some of those ideas together. Well, I was also calling it the Animus, but um, it, it's a traveling stage that, well, it, it travels slash transforms because that's kind of how the Animus would work. But for p- one part of it, you see Florence. For another part, you'll see an iconic location from the original Assassin's Creed, an iconic location from Assassin's Creed 3, Black Flag, Odyssey, Origins, different locations from across a series. That way it's less of a um, Assassin's Creed 2 stage, more of a Assassin's Creed the whole crop fucking series stage. Because the Animus right. stretches across all of them, unless I'm very much mistaken. Oh uh, no, no it, it does. It does, that's good. Uh, mine was a little more Assassin's Creed 2 based. Um, it was the House of Auditore. Uh, so it, it, I had it pictured outside because it's his home and he, you actually work, help build it up and get money and stuff. Uh, there were statues that you could break, they can climb on, uh, bushes to jump over, things like that. So you're like in front of a manor. However, I'm going to nix my own out because I have a I have an idea. Oh. I, 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 kind of, I like the traveling stage. I After someone said that, I'm like, oh yeah. I really like that. And I like the animus idea. So I like the, I have like combining those and putting the animus where it jumps. Be, like you'll be in the animus for a little bit. So it's kind of like a plain vanilla, um, just very boring, eh, not boring, I should say, but it stays in the animus for a little, little time. And then it will pick one of the um, Assassin's Creed other games. So let's say Black Flag, maybe you're on the ship it's of the Black Flag. It's literally my idea. I know that's I'm saying. I like it. Yeah. And it, will be on you'll fight there for a little bit and then it'll go back it'll desynchronize and then go to that so i think i like xantox for this and you could even have the representative area from assassin's creed 2 be the house of auditore yeah right um that actually reminds me of another idea that i had so oh my god you're in the (laughs) so imagine that you're in the animus in this kind of a fairly fairly basic area because it's the animus and you know what to expect if you play the games with that with that uh, computerized area, and then you uh, swap between certain moments and and locations between the different Assassin's Creed games. You so know we're rolling low on time, dumbass. Okay, let's go for Jesus. it. That's a great idea. Waste time on us, <laughs> Christ. Anyways, that's the last thing that we really have to uh, talk about with Ezio. So I think from here on. It's time to wrap this thing up. Yeah. So we have a special announcement, Lister and I, (gasps) that we are going to have a live Q&A broadcast on May 31st at 2 p.m. PST slash 5 p.m. EST. Or 4 p.m. CST for those of you who are living in the correct time zone. <laughs> ah, also known as your time zone. Yes. Also, nobody cares about mountain time. Nah. So, mountain time is my time. It's the same as Pacific, basically. You uh, know, you're in Arizona, Arizona, so you have your own time zone. I know. That's why I am very special. Uh, the ne- <laughs> the and we also have the next episode announcement as always at the at the bottom of the broadcast. So we're li- really looking forward to the live Q and A, of course. And there'll be more details uh, on our socials and everywhere as that as that date comes in. Uh, but the next episode is going to be a Smasher Dash, where we're going to consider assist trophy upgrades. So characters who were assist trophies already in Ultimate, uh, Isaac and Takamaru are going to go at it, and Crystal and Midna are as well. And that's the that's the raspberry cobbler of your dreams. And uh, well, to say the very least, that was a fun fun episode. Uh, I think we played off each other really well. That was a kind of like a select start gaming slash supercast for those crossover. 
Yeah. So yeah. that was cool. Thank you to Mike slash Way Off Trail slash uh, uh, Juju Bear for for joining <laughs> us. It it was a it was a good time. It was a good time. So thanks for thanks for yeah to thanks for part. yeah thanks for having me guys. It was kind of fun to uh, talk about get my Assassin's Creed nerd on. You know. Oh, of course. So you so you dive for some DVD right after we finish recording this? It's tempting. It's tempting. <laughs> now I now I kind of want to play Odyssey, you know, and catch up. Bah. <laughs> Maybe some Dead by Daylight. Yeah, you know. Hey, let me know when you uh want to include one of them into the Nintendo, you know, the, a Nintendo game. Oh, oh god. I, yeah, sure. That's gonna happen. Oh, you want to talk god, about things be... that you want to talk about how. That's your kid doing assassination. You think we can get a DVD in Smash? Come on, that's ridiculous. I'm excited. Let me know. I'll, uh-huh. I'll hit me up. Sure, we will. But yeah, uh, check out Select Start Gaming. Me and Zan talk post videos there all the daily. time. Daily, yeah, daily. Um, yeah. and uh, check out my Twitch, uh, Way Off Trail. Uh, so yeah, thanks, guys. Yep, absolutely. Glad Cheers. to have you on.